Good evening. Dude 79 here. Just doing a quick mic check. Make sure the mics sound good. I'm joined by Fanboy Tone. Hey, hi. And uh, we have uh, this some dude here. There you go. Oh, yeah, he's got a deep voice. It's uh, Barry Manilow. So we'll be back in just a moment. Hang tight. Welcome to another edition of Banter and Babble. I'm the Dude 79, and joining me always, my esteemed colleague, Mr. Fanboy Tone. Nobody cares, though. Nobody cares, because you know what, Tone? What? He's back. He's back. His third appearance on Banter and Babble. Yes. The Mocha Skin Manimal. His mother called him son because he shines like one. Mr. Rohit. Raju. The jaw jacking, back cracking, God created all men equal, then he made me the sequel. The mocha skin manimal himself. Ooh, yeah, the mocha skin manimal himself. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, dig it. <laughs> Rohit Raju. Ravishing Rohit Raju. Ravishing. Good to be back. I yeah, can't wait man. to. It's always a pleasure shop. to have you. Hey, hey, hey. hey, 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 hey talk about, yeah, we're going to talk about Pray at the top sorry. of the hour. Oh, I mean, we'll see. We'll see. We'll see. We'll <laughs> see. We'll see. I mean, I know people want to talk about it. Maybe we'll you talk about it. You cooked up a story and dropped the six of us into a meat grinder. <laughs> you son of a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> he am here. Kill me now. <laughs> <laughs> he loves his predator. He loves it. We all love the Predator. But uh, Rohit, uh, as always, man, it, it, it's great to have you back. Um, we have a, a big show tonight um, because you are a devoted Tolkien fan. Yeah, I'm a Lord of the Ring fan, nerd. <laughs> I am a huge dork. Um, I would. I, I love the movies, but I, of course, I've, I watched The Greatest Adventure, <laughs> The Hobbit. Is, is it, it the cartoon it, one? Is, is, it, is it Juicy Precious? Like I <laughs> love, that guy was freaky. Loved it as a kid, and then fell off. And then I remember seeing the trailer, um, and I was like, "Oh my God, what they're bringing this live action!" Mm -hmm. And then watched it, and then read the books, and fell in love actually with the Cimmerillion. That's probably my favorite book out of all of them. So, yes, uh, Rings of Power have uh, a lot to say about it. We're going to talk about that extensively here in a little bit. Mm. Uh, but, uh, dude, what, what's been going What's What's new with you? What, I mean, what's good? Oh, man. Um, trying to wrestle. Been wrestling for AEW as much as possible. Trying to stay very patient. Hopefully something will happen there. Yep. I have a really sweet matchup coming up. And next week I get a chance to wrestle New Japan Pro Wrestling's Rocky Romero. Ooh. I got a chance to work with him before at Impact. Yeah, yeah. I love Rocky. Rocky is fantastic. Just a great talent. Been in the game for years. Yeah. This time I'll be wrestling him at Glory Pro in St. Louis. One of my favorite promotions. Ooh, at Glory. They, they boo me out of the building. It's a, always a hot crowd. Mm -hmm. And I know this show is going to be great. And the fact that I get to work with Rocky at a show like that, I yeah. honestly cannot wait. I'm very excited. That's in St. Louis? That's in St. That's Louis, in St. Right? Louis on Sunday. Yep. Awesome. Awesome. Uh, you've been traveling around. Have you done any other shows recently anywhere? Uh, I did. And I honestly can't remember where I just was. <laughs> That's it's probably hard dead, to keep track of I'm stuff. dead serious. Uh, I was supposed to be in Chicago for the AEW loop. Unfortunately, something came up and I couldn't make it there, which sucked. 
Uh, I wish I could have been there for that, oh, but uh, <laughs> but uh, no, I wish I honestly could have been there. But um, I was, I was somewhere, and I honestly can't remember where I was recently. That's uh, CTE, too many chair shots and well, concussions. Well, there you go. That happens, man. That happens. So AW's course had a lot of mess going on with it. You know, they, yeah. they say, is there is there anything that you? <laughs> nope. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, nothing. Honestly, I wasn't there, so I heard what everything you know you heard and. It, uh, you know, it is what it is. Yeah, so absolutely. hopefully it, uh, it'll make for good TV. It's funny. The next, later, we'll the see. day after, I didn't know what had been going on. You know, I just caught up on on, on social media, on Twitter. And I went to Tony and go, man, is this, a, is this like a, is this a big thing going on? Is this like part of the, you know, everything? And Tony goes, no, this is, this is real. <laughs> <laughs> And I was like, "Oh, really? This is this really goes? Yeah, this is this is real, real." For a real while, bad. I didn't think it was, at f- but yeah, it, yeah it, it like it really quickly became quite real. Yeah, it's uh, it was honestly very hard to tell. Like even I was like, "Oh man, like this is pretty <laughs> sweet." And I'm like, "Wait a minute, what's yeah. going on here?" And I was like, "Oh, this might be a uh, which sucks as a as a real. fan too, because like it was a good pay per view. Uh you had." The return of MJF, which I kind of, like, the good things that happened got undershadowed by this like really bad thing that happened later on. So it's kind of unfortunate, and you know it is what it is. Hopefully it gets all f- figured out and ironed out. But in the meantime, you know, as a wrestling fan again, like you know, you got WWE's got new management. Guys like me who always wanted Triple H to be more involved is now involved. So God damn it, pal. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, and <laughs> right. that, and that's something I did want to get your thought on that. But the way the the direction that WWE is heading now. You know, how, how, what's your thought on that and how that's looking with Triple H, you know, kind of taking the reins uh, and, and where they're going? Um, yeah, taking the reins. Um, uh, I think it's awesome. Mm-hmm. Uh, Triple H is obviously what he did with NXT. He, man, he created something awesome there and something special. And, man, good to see him back healthy yeah. and, and, and in charge of creative. That is sweet. It's even weirder to see DX in charge everywhere too. Yeah, now Road man. Dog is yeah, up. it's like this. Yeah, but complete it's complete flip. It's really cool because I think WWE really needed that injection of something new and sure, fresh. Absolutely. And, and Triple H is going to be the guy to give it because mm-hmm. he is. He knows wrestling, but he also knows sports entertainment. And of course, you have Stephanie there as well. So I think it's going to be great. I think this is really going to be that kicking the ass wrestling needed because mm-hmm. AEW was kicking some ass for a little bit there, and they still are. But like. People want to see more. They want to see like a good competition. So I think with both of them firing on all cylinders, mm-hmm. uh, I mean, in this, you know, all the whole thing with CM Punk and stuff, it, it's crazy, but it just it draws more attention to the product, and people want to see what how they're going to respond. And they have stars, mm-hmm. you know, like you said, MJF. MJF's like he's new, he's fresh, yeah. and and he's Darby's. something that yeah, the Darby. So these people, maybe AEW is going to have new eyes on it, and they're going to see them. Mm-hmm. And these guys are going to shine. And then you have WWE doing a whole bunch of cool stuff. So it's like, man, it could be that renaissance that professional wrestling I, needed. I feel yeah, exactly. So I, 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 it could I think be a good thing. It really needs because it's yeah. a trickle down effect. And you'll see everyone's going to make start making moves and start looking at yeah. what's going on here. Yeah. How is this going to improve then? Is it going to carry over? Can it improve for us? Yes. So there's a yeah. lot of different different ways that this could play out, but in a positive effect. And you know, you talk about Triple H. You know, you you see his interviews, and I've watched a couple of them. You can just tell he's very passionate about it. Like it's when, when Vince would talk, you you could tell it was like kind of a suit, and it just it just it didn't resonate with me. No. But when Triple H talks, you're just like, oh, man, I can feel it in this guy. You know, I can feel he gets it when it. he talks. Yeah, he gets it. And I I Are think you saying I don't know what I. <laughs> <laughs> I think that like kind of like you said, like it's <laughs> old guys like us. We want that renaissance back. We yes. want we want Monday Night Wars, and we may never get that, but. Like you said, like it's better if both are doing well and can compete with each other. AEW pulled me back into wrestling on a on a national TV level outside of watching like you know when I can catch AEW Pro yeah. or Glory Pro, Pro shit or whatever you guys were doing or Impact even for that matter. But yeah, Impact still you know uh, kicking ass. Yeah, yeah, and 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 like it, it's you know AEW Brink comes back in and you know a lot of people started kind of watching that because they were like me they're like so sick of the sports entertainment thing yeah but now that we've got a guy that we know watched growing up and related to you know not i know not everybody's a triple h fan but like you can't deny the fact that he's good for wrestling he and that's what's, and he knows it and yeah. that's what's exciting about it so to have them both be well and to now me at the point where i can say now i'm ready to start watching wwe again because of that that's exciting as well too so um, I, honestly, let's let's just keep our fingers crossed and hope for the best of it. Yeah, but, um, we'll not, see. Not only do I want to watch it, 
want to be a part of it. Wink, wink. Somebody, please. <laughs> Anybody. Hey. I'd like to be a part of it. If you guys, yeah, fight fight for pens and papers. Get this yeah, guy signed. Slide me something. Yeah. Like sign. WWE, AW, whatever it might be. Yeah. I tell me, you what, man. You keep, you, keep, you keep cutting those promos you do. That promo you had a couple weeks ago. The one, dude, we, we aired that. We actually took the clip and put it on the show for our uh, viewers oh, to watch. Oh, wasn't And the, our uh, video got slammed quick the next day. Remember, I was like, oh, shit, I got to cut out that whole, yeah, we the got, whole, we got, the interview. Was it the backstage one? No. Oh, the interview the with John Shani. Yes, I tried to post it on my YouTube as well, and I got like a thing saying yeah, this isn't available. Is I, I don't know. Yeah, so. dude, they, 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 they it hit off. it, so I had to cut it out completely and then yeah. re-upload the Jerks. video. And I was like, damn, it was, that, it was a dope ass promo. No, oh, that was as little me who used to grow up watching Tony interview making Jim Death the Rose baby, <laughs> and and Ric Flair and the Horseman at that podium when they said, hey, you get an in ring with Shivani, I was like a kid. At Christmas, yeah. like and and there, I see some people. I see them. They do these interviews with Shivani. It's not even a big deal to them. To me, <laughs> you had it. It was everything. And I told them <laughs> that, and when I told them what I was gonna say, and then I just went out there and just started spitting, and because a lot of it is bullet points for me. And then he liked it, and he said, "Hey, you can talk." And then at the next time I saw him, he came up to me and shook my hand. I was like, "Man, that's cool." Oh my god, Dude, that's like you're a made man yeah. now. You know what I'm saying? That's like, like you shook Sinatra's hand. Right, that's the right. same thing, you know, yeah. in wrestling. I mean, yeah. that is yeah, that's pretty yeah. awesome. It, it, it was really cool, and it made me feel good, like because he knew. You know what I mean? He, I could tell he respected what I did. Yeah. And that guy has been. He's interviewed all the greats. Right. And the fact yeah. that I got there and I cut a pretty good promo with Tony Schiavone. That is awesome. That's that's, that's, that's something a, that I hold near and dear to my heart. Right, it's huge. It's it was huge. it was it was a kick ass promo, and mm-hmm. you know, and that's the thing. Like you know, when you get those opportunities, you know, we've know we've known that about you since we've been watching you and following you, and and being part of things. Every time you get an opportunity, dude, you strike and you do. Thank you. You don't you don't mm-hmm. you know. There's some people who kind of waltz into those situations, and there's that sense of entitlement. When you get in there, man, it is the highest energy, and it's and it's all it's just entertaining as hell. You're just like this guy. He just gets it. He has it. You know what I'm saying? He has it. And it's just, I, pre- I just wish. Fucking great, man. The biggest thing with pro wrestling right now, and it's it's like, it's weird, it's clout. So if you have a clip that airs on Twitter and it goes viral, like anything that goes viral now, next thing you know, you're the best this. Mm-hmm. And then the bandwagon, people start to jump on the bandwagon. Wrestlers know, my peers know I'm really good. They know I have it. Unfortunately, a good chunk of fans don't get it or they just don't want to get it until they're told that they should get it. And then that's when people will jump on it. But man, if I could get in there, like I remember I hate reading comments on stuff, but mm-hmm. I remember reading the comments when I cut those promos for AEW and fans were like, how come this guy's not signed? Like, what are we doing with this guy? This guy can talk. This guy's bringing mm-hmm. fire. This guy's spitting. This guy's that. And I'm yeah. like, yes, See? because I'm not going to go out there and do what my man Dante does. Dante's just like a freak of nature and, you know, jumps in the sky and then comes back down. <laughs> I'm going to spit fire because the guys I want to be are like are the guys that we still talk about today, the Steve Austins, the Rocks, the Cenas, the Triple H's. Those are the guys, They're the Jerichos, you know what I mean? The guys that were cutting the promos, telling the story before they even hit the ring, and then they tell the story in the ring. That's mm-hmm. who I want to be like, and I feel like I do a really good job of that, mm-hmm. and I just need that those chances, and I need one of them to just strike. Right. And then for them to be like, oh, yeah, that was it. Let's bring you on board. Somebody to bring me on board. Well, if you didn't know, dude, you were on the biggest talk show in uh, hey, Saginaw Township. Yeah. Uh, there you Twitch. go. There you go. So, I mean, Sorry, if you're going to go viral, it's going to be here. So yeah. We, I mean, we're, we're, we're giving you the platform. You know, you got to execute, though. That's the thing, you know. Yeah. I do want to give a shout-out to this shirt, the Sweet Lando it's shirt. fucking you see awesome. In the back. <laughs> At, uh, at class of 74, if you look at class of, uh, I don't know if it's either class of 74 or class of 1974, um, the guy used to help us make, uh, make wrestling shirts for Colin Novo. He knew I was a big Star Wars fan, so when he saw me at Impact, he gave me this. That's and we follow each other on uh, Instagram. Make sure you check him out. He does a lot of cool stuff like this. Take something old and mix it with something That new. is a fucking And dope I, shirt. I love this shirt. Yeah, it's a white dope. t-shirt. I love white t-shirts, but I never like to wear them because they get dirty. Yep. So I've probably only worn this three times. I was like, well, I... I want to rep it, and it's a good right. spot to rep it on this type good, of talk yeah. show. Absolutely. So you got Billy D. Williams, the old pirate. <laughs> so good to see you. Like, you got to rep, rep it here. So there's a place to wear it. 
it's here. It's right here, baby. It's That's right here. Harvey Dent. Um, <laughs> will you scroll down just a little bit? I do want to kind of follow up on a couple comments here. Uh, Cuddles came out with something funny that I also agree with. Uh, remember, everyone, while live, do not mention how the dude seven nine called out Rohit Raju a punk bitch. Yeah. And said he would take him at any time, any place. Don't forget that. There was that. a lot of static and lag and oh. internet. There was so a lot of something I going said on there. he is an yep. awesome dude, but with the lag and the internet, it, it cut off. And Tri North wants to know what's going to take the suplex dude into the floor. Um, <laughs> hey, a lot of back much. support. <laughs> a lot of back support. <laughs> right, 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 right. How do you feel about the leadership at the CWF, the Cuddles Wrestling Federation? Any oh, I, honestly, right? <laughs> when he said CWF, I thought he meant. Uh, Kali's promotion. <laughs> in oh, that's best <laughs> because I think that is a CWF. So I was like, man, he's a fan of Kali's promotion. Yeah, that's yeah, kind of yeah. cool. That's, uh, so that's what I thought he meant. I was like, all right, yeah. cool. Uh, Crash uh, the the Shamrock over uh, on uh, Center's got the Jazz and Blues berries, but you can also check Jacks on Bay Road as Adam as well too. So mm-hmm. there's some good ones. I know Forge is out there as well too, talking about Triple H. The bookings, Raw ratings moving up. Uh, he said Zack Ryder is also somebody who got over from the internet thing, and it's been a kind of a thing since. And that's Man, kind of an interesting way to look at it. He back, is too. one of the hardest working guys. So baked. You know, Cardona right yeah. now is one of the hardest He's working all over guys. The place. And he is reinventing himself. And my feud with him, I had such a good time. And um, big shout out to him because when I left Impact, he put in a word for me at AEW, he put in a word for me at NWA. And because he enjoyed our feud together. And I remember him and Chelsea awesome were like, feud, uh, I had such a good time with him. He's so easy to wrestle and it was just fun. And, um, but it was cool because he, you know, wrestling to me, I have that confidence. Like you can put me in the ring with anybody. So when they put me in the ring with a guy that used to work at WWE and I have that chip on my shoulder, like, yeah, I'm going to show you that I can go mm-hmm. and that you're, you're going to have to stay up with me on promos. So, it was fun because I thought he saw like, yeah, this guy's good, mm-hmm. and that is a huge deal because you know he's been everywhere, and for a guy like him, and that knows how to you know work the gimmick, and and you know for him to get that respect from him, that's awesome. See, I mean, and that awesome. and that's what I love about just professional sports in general is that respect. I mean, if you if you look at like a lot of like in high school and college and other sport and like 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 bush league stuff around the area. When people compete against each other, it can get a little nasty. You know, somebody, you know, it, it's, it's, you know, there's a difference. But when you get to the pros and, yeah, you go up against somebody who's been to the show, you know, he's been to the league or whatever, and they still respect what you're bringing to the table. It's not like, oh, he's trying to show me. It's just like, damn, okay, he's good. And you get that respect. That's dope. Sometimes. Oh, so, I there mean, there's is, probably still. Oh, yeah. my God. There's some guys that'll be like, well, I don't know who you are. So I've been here. I'm not doing any of that for you. Or, no, this match is going to be really short. And you're like, motherfucker, I'm the champion here. How is this match going to be really short? And, <laughs> and it's like, they'll do stuff like that. Really? Well, to me, one of the coolest guys was Rhino because Rhino, Rhino has been yeah. everywhere. And Rhino is the guy that is always giving back to the younger dudes. And to me, that's how I'll always want to be. If I ever make it as even as remotely big as he did, mm-hmm. I'll always give back to the younger guys. And, and girls that are coming in and, and give them that advice because you don't want to be you, you don't never know who's going to be sooner or later these one of these people are going to be ahead of you right so you better always remember that and be nice to them and not just because that's what you fear but you should just be a professional yes. and have that respect and recognize their grind recognize that their torch. hustle yeah. because we've all been there and hell I'm still you know it's funny because I'll walk into a locker room and sometimes people are like oh man you were an impact you're exhibition champion. I'm like, bro, I'm trying to get this. I'm still trying to get that. I'm trying to get paid. <laughs> mm-hmm. I'm trying to get action figure. I'm trying to get royalties. Yeah, no shit. <laughs> I want a good money contract where I ain't got to do nothing but wrestle. So, But it does feel good. It kind of brings you back to reality. And then, like you said, dude, you get to coach, you know, with Shivani. Like, yeah, I did. That's really awesome. And you get the respect of your peers. Yes. And not just like like just your peers, but I mean like upper echelon peers. People yeah. who have seen a lot. Yeah. They've seen people. They've seen a lot of stuff. And when you get that respect i mean that and that probably just motivates you like shit i'm doing something right i'm gonna keep going it just it lights a fire and just keeps you going right yeah yep it does that's awesome and some people don't want to do anything with you because they do know how good you are and they're like oh i don't want to that person to overshadow me 
There is some uh, weird jealousy there, and, you know. Kind of petty. Like yeah, it is. Kind of petty yeah. and bitchy, yeah, but how life is. You I know, guess. you can't exactly do that's just yeah, that's it's just the way it is, you know. Rohit ice cream bars. Hell yeah, man. I'll take some ice cream bars. A Rohit ice cream bar. Mocha's, what would be, be mo- what, mocha. what would that be made mocha of? Mocha flavored. What would be in a Rohit ice cream bar? Chocolate, vanilla, it'd have like a mounds flavor, but we wouldn't call it mounds. We'd have to call it something yeah, else. Something spicy. Uh yeah. yeah. And um Call, I'm not gonna say what we call it. Oh boy! <laughs> <laughs> hey, this isn't a kids show. You're all right. Let it rip, man. Oh no, that, that'd be funny though. That'll be a behind the yeah. scenes thing. <laughs> yeah, that'll be an after the show thing. Yeah. No, man, we're excited to have you here, man. We got a lot of great stuff to talk about. Uh, Tom, what yeah. the hell you been up to, man? Yeah, Tom, what's up? I'm working. <laughs> <laughs> Buzz Killington over here. I've just been working. Fucking work sucks, man. Yeah, it's been just busy. Uh, this past week has just been chaos in a good way, though. But like in a way where it's just like I feel older. I do feel like a dad now. Like you know, I used to be hyped about going to a tailgate and going on the Michigan right. State tailgate and cutting loose, go down to a tailgate, have three beers over the course of like seven, six or seven hours. Not the tailgates I remember back in the day. But I tell you what, dude. Saturday was one of the best days ever, man, because I got to take my kids to their first college football game. Oh. And, dude, I'm telling you, um, I got a video of us walking into the same. Like, Anderson was really hyped about it. You know, he loves sports, but <clears throat> Ethan is, like, the one who was, like, really Michigan State this, Michigan State that. And so I got a video of him walking up the tunnel to, like, see the stadium. Yeah. And, man, have you ever seen Rudy? Oh, yeah. You know the part when the dad walks out of the stadium, he's like, this is the most beautiful sight. Yeah. His eyes. Have ever seen. His eyes lit up like that. Oh, man. And, like, I got on video, and he's like, and he's, I mean, the way he's, he, it's so innocent, and it's so pure, because he's just like, oh, God. Oh, God. When he's walking, it just, I was just like, dude, it was like, I was on the verge of tears when I was recording, because he was oh, just man. so excited, man. Mm-hmm. I was just like, man, that was, um, it was awesome. You That's know, cool. and we get into the stadium, and it was a jam-packed house. It was rocking. The fans were nuts. And uh, it was about... I'll have time when my youngest Anderson, he started falling asleep because <laughs> he's not ready for tailgate life yet. You know, he's running around with his other cousins right, and other friends right. and stuff. So they got burned all a little bit. But man, uh, when, when I said we had to leave at halftime, Ethan was like, oh, <laughs> it's like, you go. I'm staying here. Right. Uh, so, right. he, but overall, man, it was um, it was an amazing experience. It was beautiful. Weather. Great game to go to. It was a good one, man. You know, they took they handled their business. Stomped. This Saturday will be the true test. Mm-hmm. They go out west, where I think my cousin told me the other night Michigan State is two in thirteen lifetime when they go west of Iowa City, mm. and so they're going out to uh, Washington. They got a tough team out there. So Wednesday or Saturday night is going to be the first like true test. Man, that traveling season. west for any sports team's horse shit. Huh. I mean, what, what? What? I mean, you've probably bounced out west a couple of times for for work or anything. Like that. What's that like? That that travel. I mean, is it is it wear and tear? It depends if it's flying or driving. The yeah. drive to St. Louis sucks. The drive to Toronto would always suck. Um, anytime we'd go out west, we'd end up flying out there, so yeah. that was fine. Normally Vegas or something like that. Right. So that's freaking awesome. You know, <laughs> being able to go out to Vegas. Yeah, I mean, I can be tired um, of Vegas. But uh, sometimes I remember Carm and I did this show. Uh, in New Jersey, and just him and I drove out there, and it was like a snowstorm. That oh, was brutal. Oh, man. So sometimes the wear and tear of just being in the car for eight to ten hours or more, that sucks. That's brutal. That's But getting there is one thing, but it's if you don't stay the night, so you wrestle, and then you immediately get in the car, and you take off, and you're already, your adrenaline's done, you're beat up from the match, and you just want to sleep, and you can't because you probably have to drive, or you got to watch <laughs> this person drive, or maybe you can sleep in the car. But those are the worst because you're sore, your back hurts, your knees hurt, right. and you just you just don't want to be there anymore. But I can't imagine that kind yeah. of drive. Driving north for three hours up north, I'm just like, oh fuck this. I'm yeah, like five, six, ten hours. No, I'd it's weird too because three hours now. Because I used to hate that going to like shows wrestling shows with my dad in detroit and it was two hours and i thought it was the worst thing yeah, right 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 and then now it's just like <laughs> when we used to do the impact tapings in nashville it was like a nine hour drive and at least and then jake and i would just drive and we would just take turns but for some reason a lot of times though with the company you keep if you have really good company that drive goes by quick. goes by fast yes or if you just fall asleep after eating a bunch of meat you just you know you're fine anyways. yeah yeah as long as somebody else been driving <laughs> you trust them I would try and do that, but if it was late at night, I'd be waking up because I'm scared they would falling asleep. Mm-hmm. So I was like, you never got that deep sleep. Then it's your turn to drive, and then you're like, oh, oh. Yeah, that's the worst. Yeah, we is. made an epic drive. We went down to Florida for a wedding. Or no, uh, might have been for a wedding. This was probably like 10, 12 years ago. Melissa and I went down there, and we drove 
And we left at like 6 p.m. Uh, on Saturday. Like, you know, right, let's head back. And, and we were, and we got to about, um, man, I think we just gotten through Virginia. And we, I was just like, you know what? Fuck it. We're, we're going to power through. We're going we're gonna to make it through. We're going to drive through the night. And I remember, dude, when we got to uh, Frankenmuth, just past Frankenmuth, it was like 6 a.m. You know, I'm just like, just rolling the windows down. Right. I got the techno music playing just so I can stay awake. And it was just, it, that was an excruciating drive. We yeah. said, fuck it, we're just going to go through the night. And that was tough. Yeah, dude. Yeah. <laughs> That's some fuck bullshit that. right that there. Sucks, fuck man. that. It was not fun at all. Yeah. Uh, before we get to the first topic, though, uh, Rohia, I mentioned that we did have a, a writing question. Mm. Somebody has Ask a question away. for you. And I think it is a, a question people would like to know more about. <laughs> uh, no, I, the movie's not great, though. It's a subpar movie. He, said he, want, he, he, says yeah. he thinks you got a problem with his movie. Oh, well, my buddy, the, why don't you have a, the other predator? Because this is the one that has an issue. This guy, he, ha, he wants to know what's the problem with this movie. I don't have a problem with it, but it's not as well, great. Well, if you're subpar, no, my it. problem uh -oh. is that you said it's better than the first. That's my problem. I said, no. Now, if you remember my rankings, it was 1A, 1B. I said it had some elements were better than the first. The story is better than the first. I'm going to tell you first. this. I don't even remember what happened in that movie that much. Well, it's because you, you probably just got done driving nine hours. You fell asleep. <laughs> and you don't remember anything. That's no. okay. That I happens. will say this. I, um, one thing I thought it was going to be was kind of what we were talking about with uh, earlier off, off uh, camera. Um, I like the way they handle the protagonist because mm -hmm. one of the with first things I was like, how the hell is a hundred and five pound girl going to kill this jacked freaking predator? Like no way. But the way she did it, I was actually, okay, that was cool. Yeah. I liked that a lot. Yeah. No, I, but I, uh, the movie, the movie for me was subpar, the, mo subpar the most the most memorable is, is in the middle. The most, what do the kids call it? Mid. It's mid, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's mid. I didn't, I didn't think it was. I thought you had a lot of critics saying this is the best thing ever because you had a lot of people saying this is the worst thing ever. It's woke, <laughs> so you had to balance it out. Yeah, but yeah. then you have people that are smart and in the middle, like yeah, it was good. <laughs> that was it. The most memorable character was the dog. Oh, hands down. You can't tell me that dog was. That dog was, was dope. Dog was dope. And that, and the predator. And I just, I, I really afterwards. liked it. Uh, there Everybody was a lot else there. I don't remember. The first like movie, the I remembered everybody because they all had their own personality. That's fa that's a valid point. But keep in mind, though, it's they had seven or eight guys to, to work with. This is just her and her brother and uh, and the goofy ass uh, uh, French 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 <laughs> trolling. Oh, hey, hey, hey. That when you Whoa, when you mentioned that, that when you mentioned so that, then I were watching. I agree with you a thousand percent. But that's the only part of the movie I felt like they really fumbled in terms of like the characters because. They were just caricatures. They were just fodder. They, I mean, they, I mean, you can have fodder, you know, and, but they can still be menacing. These guys were like caricatures. Ford wants me to cut a promo. I'll cut a promo on it, <laughs> like Stone Cold Steve Austin. First, you got this hundred five pound girl, and you want to compare him to Arnold? <coughs> uh -uh, not happening. You can't compare the Comanche tribe to Carl Weathers, Bill Duke. The other guy, Billy, I can't remember his Sonny real Lam name. Sonny Latham. Yeah, Sonny Latham. Uh, 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 uh. And the first Predator. You didn't even know what it was. You were scared shitless. But this movie, they tried to say, if it bleeds, we can kill it. Nuh uh, not in my house. That line doesn't even fit. That line doesn't even fit. Just like Jesse Ventura said, I ain't got time to bleed. <laughs> I ain't got time to watch that movie for a second time. Because if you say one more thing about it, I'm going to pick you up and drop you on that stack of dimes that you call it. Neck. There's your promo for Tanner. <laughs> Jesus <laughs> right. That's how you go viral on banter and battle. <laughs> I guess so. Yeah. Goddamn talking about the predator to prey like I give a rat's ass. <laughs> About the gun they showed at the end that old Danny Glover rigs. I don't care. I don't care if it ain't got the most epic handshake of all time. It don't mean shit to me. Nothing uh -huh. about a sexual Tyrannosaurus. <laughs> yeah. This shit will make you a sexual Tyrannosaurus. Right. What a line. What a line. What? Scrap this on your sore ass, Blaine. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> that movie, it, it was No, don't get me wrong, man. The, the, the first so one, anyway, the first one will ways. always be a classic. I just felt like this was a really good reboot, in a sense, to make <laughs> the franchise 
relevant again because of get, how poorly that. the previous. I mean, yes. look, let's talk. I mean, Predators or I didn't the mind Predator. That one. I didn't no, mind I'm not Predators. Predator, the Predator. That was one of the worst things I've ever seen. That and when offensive. you're riding on that, an AVP Requiem, but then you got the Predator, Predators before that, which I liked. I thought Predators was good, but it, it needed a Mid. reboot bad, and I felt like this movie nailed it. It, it was had good. a good protagonist, yeah. you know, and and and, I, and that's why I feel like. Had they not done the 1987 Predator, this movie, I feel like, would have been like, oh, I want to see where this franchise is going to go. Yeah, if this was the first in the series, it would have been what the first. Well, actually, chronologically, it technically is now. (laughs) (laughs) Well, I guess you're right. He's I not wrong. Right. No, he's, he's, not, he's wrong. not wrong. He's not wrong. I just at want all. to see the predators come back during like the you know dinosaurs and shit. <laughs> I do. I. W- I mean, if they're gonna hunt anything, that would be it. Like, that's I mean, big they, game. I, can, they, can they win that fight? I mean, they probably blow limbs uh, No, off. because they, can't, see, they but, can't win against humans. That was their <laughs> yeah, point. This is true. That's this is point. true. <laughs> this is true. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, they would get eviscerated by like five velociraptors and right. Them. Maybe a Jurassic Park crossover yeah. would be sweet. Speaking of, and I know this Man, goes way crap. off. Have you guys ever seen Primal? The guy that did Samurai Jack. It's uh, a caveman cartoon. No, I keep hearing about Holy that one. Holy shit! Yeah, you need yeah. to watch that and have me back on so we can talk that. Yeah, I've been hearing about There's that. There's no English. There's no words. It's just him and this T Rex that he befriends, and they go on some wild fucking yeah, I need adventures. To see that. It's like. Some Frank Fazetta stuff meets Samurai Jack. It's awesome. That's dope. I like it's that. so good. That sounds awesome. Yeah, it gets a little weird at one point. It has like a zombie dinosaur in this one thing, but it's it's still good. Like you guys got to watch that. It's really good. Yeah, I've been hearing that. Right. Yeah, it's What's the first on? episode kind of it, it, it kicks you in the gut a couple times. You're like, man. Lacey, o, Lacey over on uh, Facebook says, "Hi guys, new Prey movie will bring new fans, which could be fun for a reboot." I, I agree. I think like you know. For the Die Hard fans, the original. Lacey. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just teasing. <laughs> he, he's feisty like that. Uh, Jay McKenzie says, Turok versus Predator. Ooh, that'd be a good Ooh, game. Ooh, that would be good. You guys remember the, um, you know what I wish they would do? You remember the Batman versus Predator comic? No. You no. guys never know, Mike? No. That was so good. I guess who hasn't Batman you, fought these days? But then, no, that was old. It was a Dark Horse when Dark Horse and DC would team up. And then there was also um, a fan-made movie. It was it was Batman. He fights like the alien, and then at the end, um, the wow. Predator shows. It's really good. It's a really good fan Damn, made okay. movie. Back when Comic Con had all the bootleg stuff, but it was uh, yeah. it was really good. But yeah, the Batman versus Predator comic. It's a two parter. I feel like I have to find awesome. this thing. That sounds amazing. Yeah, I, I I think I have it at home still. I'll look for it and let you borrow it, man. It's. It's really good. Speaking of Batman, Cross Batman Dead End. That was too. it. The guy. Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah, there, yeah there, that there was it. That was that, that was the the fan made film. Nice. Uh, Crash says the Batman Predator armor was badass. Mm-hmm. I, I, gotta, I gotta find this shit. Batman Dude, right? and, uh, that that needs to be made. If DC can get that somehow, Warner <coughs> Brothers can team up. Who does Predator? Oh, uh, that's Disney now. Oh shit! Or, yeah, because yeah, who? Uh, that ain't ever gonna happen. Rip, yeah, did uh, Disney princesses? I don't know. <laughs> uh, the uh, uh, Batman's gonna cross over Spawn again. Uh, this uh, December, I seen that. I seen that, that was a that was a huge behind. thing as for me as a kid because it was Todd and Frank Miller. King Cuddles came with that. Info. I seen Cuddles. That's the guy in the truck, man. He's always got the he's always got the info. Batman. Uh, Cuddles yeah. puts this. Batman vs Predator is a comic book crossover featuring That's a good. duel between Batman and members of the titular extra, extraterrestrial race from the Predator film franchise. It was written by Dave Gibbons with art by Damn. Andy. And Adam oh, ninety one. Okay, so super super. And was published by DC Comics and Dark Horse in ninety one. Uh, that's actually the same time I think I think Predator Two came out in nine. It was right after uh, wow. right after Predator Two. Predator vs. Mulan. Wolverine vs. Predator. Versus Predator. Oh, yeah, okay. that would be awesome. That would right. be right. sweet. Come on, bub. Well, hey, we have multiple topics. First thing we're going to touch on really quick is a movie review. We're, we're going to spoil it for uh, Rohit so he doesn't have to go see it. Damn it! I'm just Let's kidding. Let's talk about Barbarian. Is it about no Conan? Sumerian? Damn it. <laughs> nice try. I knew you were going to go yes. there. <laughs> so, I mean, Barbarian, never know. Yeah. So uh, <clears throat> we actually ran the trailer for Barbarian uh, the week after we saw Black, Black Phone. Black Phone, yep. yep. Ooh, good. They ran yeah. a, they ran yeah, a, a cool. trio of trailers during that movie. We saw that. We saw Smile, Smile which, which is, comes out at the end of this it's month. Say, yeah, real soon. Pearl comes out this week. So we like we're, we're it's uh, it's not October, but horror is like yeah. on all cylinders right now. What are they coming out on streaming services? No, they're at theaters, man. <coughs> they're, yeah, Pearl's yeah, at yeah, theaters. Yeah. Smiles at theaters. Mm-hmm. And so uh, when we saw the trailer for Barbarian, 
<clears throat> all we saw was what we saw. We, well, saw, we saw Skarsgård. We saw Bill Skarsgård, who looked like a creepy dude who was staying at an Airbnb. Really? I know. <laughs> weird, what a weird <laughs> role for Bill Skarsgård. Bup, bup, bup. What a stretch. Uh, and, and what yeah, we exactly. saw was he shows up to an Airbnb, or, a, or um, I'm sorry, uh, this young girl uh, played by Georgina Campbell. She shows up at an Airbnb, and there's Bill Skarsgård looking sus. And we, we think we know <clears throat> where this movie's going. Yeah. Don't have a fucking clue. No. This is... This, dude, we've talked about it several times in the past. How when we see trailers, we're like, man, they showed us everything in the fucking trailer. Man, yeah, Marvel's <laughs> really bad about that. They've shown us everything in the trailer, and no. it kind of ruins it. Oh, they kind of—they don't show us everything. They always edit yeah, stuff Yeah, they always up. edit stuff, but like you get a pretty good idea of what's going on. <laughs> you have a really good idea, and a lot of movies are guilty of that. And when we saw this trailer, we're like, oh, man, this would be pretty good. A Scar's Guard's like a you know, psychopath. I mean, oh, okay, cool. Mm-hmm. I'll go see that shit. One saw this movie, not what you think. Not at all. And I give huge points for that alone because I like my horror movies when they're unpredictable. Right. When you don't know what the hell's going Sleep on. Sleepaway Camp. Sleep, dude, Sleepaway Camp. Oh. Malignant. I see Malignant to a degree. Mm-hmm. We saw each other. And like when we saw where that movie went, we were just like, oof, wow, did not see that coming. Mm-hmm. Now, look, does that mean it's always going to stick its landing? No. But I appreciate originality. I like mm-hmm. it when horror movies say, like, look, I'm not going to follow this formula, mm-hmm. you know, and I'm going to do something different. That's one of the things that I really enjoyed about this movie is what, at the end of the movie, you're just like, fuck, I did not see any of this. Any stuff. of it. <clears throat> no, none of it coming. I, I Look, I will listen to arguments regarding where the story does go and the way it hand, uh, how they handle some of the pacing because I do think there are some jarring transitions that you're just kind of like, oh, that, that's, that's interesting that we cut to this. And yeah, it was, it was very interesting. There are some bizarre choices there that I feel like are, po- are going to be points of contention for a lot of people who see this. But look, the, the director here is Zach Greger, who is mostly known for the whitest Which kids you know. Which is wild with, again, <clears throat> comedians, though. Funny guys. Messing with genres. Like a Jordan Peele. And that, yeah. did you see at the end of this movie, he thanks Jordan Peele in the credits. Oh, I didn't. He says, thank you, Jordan Peele. Because he's this guy's mostly been a funny guy with his, his uh, he wrote he basically directed sketch comedy that's all he's known for wow. is sketch comedy, and then he comes out and directs this movie, uh, but this guy shows in this film regardless of the actual where the story goes he shows he is a master at crafting tension mm-hmm. and building Jesus. up suspense. There are yeah. a lot of moments in this movie where you're just like. Beta, bro, you're holding your breath. You're right. just like, shit, what is going right. to happen here? Like claustrophobic yeah. shots. I mean, he Lighting really, shots were done really well. <clears throat> lighting like, is like great. Really, a lighting, really? part, a li- lighting plays into that claustrophobia. Yeah. It's, it's a very tense movie when he yeah. wants to ratchet it up. It's, it's wild, man. This movie basically starts off as kind of like this thriller and just kind of like makes its way into like a grindhouse, like just balls gonzo horror movie. Yeah. And uh, the thing is, and, and when I say that, you think about the trailer and you're just like, what? Yeah. Like, how are you? Yeah. How'd you come to this conclusion? Like, what are you talking about? Go see this. Don't watch. Like, if you like horror, like, look, I, again, I will listen to anybody who has issues with some of the themes or how they j- transition to different parts of the story. Yes, there, it is jarring. You know, even for somebody who I really enjoyed this movie, there were some parts I was like, oof, this is a wild transition. Yeah. <laughs> like, I did not see this coming. But it's, it's, it's to the point where, though, like, whenever he does make those transitions, it gets right back on track, mm-hmm. you know, and it continues to just keep you on the edge of your seat. Mm-hmm. Unpredictable and very intense. Uh, I really like the performance in this in this movie, especially by the main trio, Skarsgård, Campbell, and Justin Long, who is, I don't know what it is about Justin Long. He's like, good. when you think of Tusk, but you also think of, like, Jeepers Creepers. When he is disheveled, or even and, some of his comedy. <clears throat> yeah, he, he has this way of like instilling comedy into horror where it's, it's weird. like it's, it's terrifying, but you're just like, oh my God, like that's kind of yeah, funny he's, too. Like he's really He's very talented within when he's working within the horror genre. Uh I heard this movie was bad. I guess they were look, Ann House, like I, I don't want to sit there and say anybody's wrong. This is one of those movies where I think it's it's just gonna be depending on preference and what you mm. expect from a horror movie. And that's the thing. Like, going in this movie, don't expect anything. Yeah, I'm not going to watch the trailer. Yeah, I mean, dude, even if you do, you might appreciate the movie more if you watch the trailer. Because well, literally, really? n- uh, when you watch the trailer, you're going to think you know what's up. And then you'll right. appreciate the fact that the director's like, nope. Hmm. Have fun. I, I, as somebody who's still trying to, in late in life, explore horror movies and enjoy them more, um, 
and there was some pretty good jump scares. I feel like oh, in yeah. this movie, I'm it didn't really. I I'm not a jump scare person. That's part of my problem with horror films. I'm just not like I can feel the tension. I know it's coming. It doesn't surprise me. That being said, like you said, the tension is built so well in this movie that even I was like. Without jumping, I was like, "This is fucking creepy." Yeah, like, this is fucking creepy. But I there also some... feel like if you have a lot of tension, you don't necessarily need the right. jump scare. Uh, the, but every... you can just keep people uncomfortable. Yeah, yeah, and, really and, and the stuff yeah, was that's true. Uncom- being yeah, uncomfortable goes a long way. If it's if it's unsettling, and it certainly was yes. a lot. Like it definitely like at first I didn't know what to think because I was surprised from where it deviated uh, from the trailer in some way, or just wasn't what you thought it was going to be. But it still ends up putting together this really good like story and like even the jarringness that I feel people like how things kind of switch. Kind of liked it because it's different. Like I, I kind of, I kind of, I kind of, yeah. And um, that's kind of how I feel about it. Like I definitely think people should go see this. My biggest takeaway that I felt like I, I wanted more of was just more background story of like just the the set piece of it generally yep. i feel like there was some things i had some unanswered questions i felt like kind of like how you said with the uh vampires and jamie fox's mm-hmm. movie like you wanted more background there i wanted some more background in some areas as mm-hmm. well too i just wanted a little bit more yeah um but other than that yeah i i thought it was uh, uh interesting it was i think the only reason i i didn't have an issue with like the the lack of depth or uh, uh, the exploring of certain stuff is because i feel like the vampires for example i'll use that as an example the vampires Vampires were in that movie like widespread. Like, how can we not know? Yeah. How yeah. can everyone not know? This is more of an you isolated just, thing. So, I, what's that? Did you just spoil it. What happened? Did you spoil it. I didn't spoil it. Anymore. Oh, okay. Oh, no. the vampires? Yeah. Oh, no, no. no that, that's about another, another movie. movie. That's oh, a different movie. That's a different Jamie, movie. It's Jamie like, Foxx's. Uh, that, that Jamie oh, Foxx movie. Oh, okay. No, like, no, 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 no. No, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, now yeah. I just spoiled it by saying vampires are not a part of this movie. Sorry. Oh, great. Right. Now I thought that. Oh, I'm confused. <laughs> What's going on? <laughs> I was only going to see it if it had vampires. So Conan's not in this. <laughs> no, it's yeah. not Conan. Okay. I was, I was, what if it was Conan O'Brien instead? <laughs> That's <laughs> the twist. I see yeah. what you yeah, mean. Yeah, Conan O'Brien the Barbarian. Night, yeah, Day Shift. Yeah, day shift yeah, it's Bright called. 2 or whatever it was. <laughs> bright 2. Uh, Blanc was said Justin Long will forever, forever be Brandon uh, St. Randy and uh, Je- uh, Zach and Mary make a porno. Yep. That you know, that was one of the roles I was always thinking of. One of, of the too. greatest fucking cameos ever. Like I would I put that cameo up there with Kevin Hart in Forty Year Old Virgin when he's at the at the store oh, and him man. and old boy start locking horns and they start talking shit. One of like just like the best cameos ever where I just like die fucking laughing. Mm-hmm. Justin Long and Zach and Mary make a portal, that whole segment you could just tell like he is just eating up, and even Brandon Ruth in some scenes, you can tell he's just like uncomfortable because <laughs> Long is just so into that. Scene, yeah, yeah. Man. Well, he plays that character in the Jane and Silent Bob, the last movie too, as well too, as a crossover. Oh, does That's he? The really? same character from Zack oh, and Mary. Kind of nice. lives, kind of lives in that Arrowverse as well too. But um, I, he's always going to be the guy from Waiting for Me. That's the only thing I see Justin Long every single time is he's the main protagonist oh, in, yeah. in in the movie Waiting yeah. with uh, um with Ryan uh, Reynolds. With Ryan Reynolds. I actually really like Justin Long in in um. In Jeepers Creepers, didn't I get, thought Jeepers Creepers was really good. By right the up until monster the in Jeepers Creepers. Oh, he gets he gets his eyes cut out. I don't think he gets raped. Maybe Jeepers he got skull Creepers fucked. Monster, I think it was two. I, I swear he raped somebody. I could do it in that. Uh, that's what I remember. Man, I was like, man, I, this is weird. Maybe that's a different Jeepers Creepers. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> was that on VHS? Maybe, or? It, was, <laughs> maybe it was Sleepers. I got my peepers. VCR out last night. Pulled <laughs> yes. out my old tapes. Yeah. Sleepers, Sleepers, yeah. Sleepers, Peepers. Gets, uh, no, I'm just Sleepaway oh. Camp. Sleepaway Camp. Sleep, say, I just blame Sleepaway Camp. I was doing camp. the porn version of it. Um, yeah. What was the other one that I liked for just long? Actually, I thought he was good in Die Hard. He he was in the fourth Die Hard movie. Oh, I actually yeah, liked him in Die Hard. Oh so. yeah, he was. Live free or Die Hard. Yeah, I actually yeah. liked him paired up with Bruce Willis in that movie. I thought he was like a good. Mm. He was. He reminded me. He he played the same type of role that Sam Jackson did in Die Hard with the Vengeance. Just kind of that comic relief, I but like also the, part Sam of Jackson it. So. That. I do too, yeah. Personally, Drag Me to Hell. That's another really good one with Justin Long. And did you see? Did I see that they're doing a Tusk too? Yeah, yeah. Uh, somebody was just talking about that somewhere on yes, social media. Yes, I think they just recently said that he they are doing is it a, a horror second movie one. too. I think I've it's heard a Kevin it. Smith joint, isn't yeah. it? Isn't Tusk the first one? That's a, so where he plays like a walrus, like Justin Long is like uh, transformed into a walrus or oh, some shit. Oh no, never mind. Uh, Justin Long and Galaxy oh, yeah, Dodgeball. Quest? Hell Dodgeball. Yeah. Yes, 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 yes. yes. I mean, I'm telling you, he, he's got a lot of range for sure. He's Does got drama, a lot of comedy, yeah. horror. Yeah. He can do it all, man. Cool. So big fans of that. But no, I don't, that's all we're going to say about Barbarian. I highly recommend it. You know, like I said, it, the, whether or not you can get behind the story and where it goes, because again, 
This is an original horror film. This is very original. This is nothing that you, you're going to see coming. Uh, and, and also, big shout out to Richard Brake. I am a huge Richard Brake fan. When he wants to be a creepy motherfucker, he can be a creepy motherfucker. Oh, dude. Uh, I, yeah, I was really. I didn't know he was in this originally. Dude, I didn't know I, either. I saw him and I'm like, whoa, shit. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. enjoy it. Yeah. Go watch it. Let us know your thoughts in the, in the, in the comments or next week's show yeah. or the week after. We talk about that a little bit later. Yeah. But check it out. It is, uh, but uh, at the most, it is a very effective horror film yeah. that will, will definitely kind of have you on the edge of your And Scarzard does eat up all the scenes he's in, of course. He just. He's awesome. The guy could act sleeping. Yeah, he really could. He's really good. Like I said, the whole trio is great. They're all related, right? All of them Yeah, all, all of them. Wow, There's like three or four of them. At yeah. least, I think all four of them act. There's one that doesn't act as much. I didn't realize Skellen was in uh, was in Andor. Yeah, yeah. he's... Oh, yeah. Yeah. Seen yeah, the, yeah. I see him in the show. I was like, that's pretty, pretty exciting. Dope, man. What does he call him? Ander? And, yeah, Ander. He goes, Ander. Ander. <laughs> Ander. <laughs> Ander. I'm like, wow, okay. Ender? Like Ender's game? Yeah. Ander. <laughs> Ander. <laughs> all right, so we're going to move on. To uh, the D23 Expo. There was a lot of shit that got announced this past weekend at D3. A lot of did stuff. Did you see the new uh, yeah, Mickey Mouse of... and Minnie Mouse ears coming out? I did not. Whoa, wow. It looks like, it looks like yeah, they did announce their centennials. They're, they're black, and it's like silver, and it looks like somebody just splooged all over them. Ooh, it's been all over the me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Minnie, <huh? laughs> Gosh, Mickey, what do you call on your ears? I imagine Mickey's in the corner and Goofy's doing the business. Anyways, all right, yeah, so. Definitely. Here it comes. <laughs> Gorge. Gorge. Splurge. Oh, my God. You guys are sick. Disney's, if you haven't seen Disney's them. Disney's pulling this. You, need, you, you guys need are to, now. You need to see Had them. the wrong person on the show. You need to see them. They are not They're not kid-friendly at all. <laughs> the memes have been all over. Uh, they'll pull them. They'll, yeah. They'll pull well, them out. Right. Yeah. Hey. <laughs> All right, no, so we that. have a Bullshit. quartet of trailers, four of them, four, of four them. trailers we're going to check I'm out right trailers. now, uh, really excited for all these, I actually uh, have not watched the Secret uh, Invasion trailer yet, I have not watched that Me one. either, so oh, this will be my first time watching that, but first, we're going to start off with Andrew, now look, I was, Andrew, 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 Andrew. I was really excited for this when, I, when it was announced, but uh, after watching this trailer, I'm even more excited about it because of who's involved directing it, the director of Born Legacy. Yeah, man. So now if they're using that type of like sp- like like presentation with a Born movie, because obviously this kind of fits that with what we're doing with this. Matt Damon. Ma- <laughs> Matt Damon. Huh. Let's check out the trailer for Andrew. <laughs> Matt. Spies. Saboteurs. Assassins, who've all done terrible things on behalf of the rebellion. Cassian Ander, don't matter what you tell me or tell yourself, you'll ultimately die fighting these bastards. Wouldn't you rather give it all at once to something real? We've chosen a side. We're fighting against the dark. There is an organized rebel effort. Drill down and get a hunt started. You realize what you set in motion? People will suffer. Time has come to force their hand. At what cost? Everything! Every day we wait, they get stronger. Let's take them by surprise. For the greater good. Call it what you will. It's calling war. People are standing up. They're afraid. Right now, they're afraid. Let's go! Star Wars Andor. Three episode premiere. Streaming September 21st. All right. So, um, initial impression. Oh, I mean, I, ho- I mean, first of all, we're going to get three episodes. This drops next week. Not only are yeah, we getting three wait. episodes at launch, this sucker is twelve episodes. So now yes. we've complained multiple times about some of these Disney shows running six, eight episodes, right? <laughs> twelve episodes, yeah, twenty-four minutes. Uh, I would be super disappointed with that. But um, no, like, look, I always thought Rogue One was one of the best Star Wars movies. I mean, it really. I like as how far they as the new ones. Yeah. They explored like the the kind of like the dirty workings of uh, of the Jedi side of thing or the rebellion, you know, mm-hmm. the, the certain things you had to do to get your hands dirty to kind of get things rolling. 
and I really like the idea that they're going to explore this even more. Mm -hmm. Great casting, and I just like the the people involved. I mean, this has a lot of promise. I mean, what do you guys think? When they first announced it, I was like, who the hell gives a rat's ass about Andor? And then I remember when I saw the first trailer, I was like, oh, okay. (laughs) I give a rat's ass. I give a rat's ass. (laughs) But I'm a big fan of this actor. Um, I loved him in Narcos. Narcos, yeah. Loved him in Narcos. So, and then when he came out to Star Wars Celebration, and he got such a huge pop from the crowd, and you could tell he genuinely, like, he felt that. He he, he enjoyed it, and uh, it didn't seem like he was just, oh, yeah, hey, thanks, guys. No, it <laughs> felt like he didn't know what to expect, and the crowd showed him a lot of love, and you, you could tell he, he liked that. Um, one thing, and, and this is a small nitpick, they look like they put a lot of budget. This looks like it has a huge yes. budget. I <clears throat> wish they would have put this budget for Obi Wan and Boba Fett. Yes, because those yes. are those are two pillar shows, in my opinion, or two yeah. pillar, two pillar characters. And I can't remember how many times we bitched about the quality of that show. Yeah, yeah. especially the Obi Wan show. Yes. It looked like man, it, it looked bad a lot of times. But um, this looks like looks like Star Rogue Wars, One. <clears throat> but it does look like Rogue One. But Pretty. it looks like. Uh, it doesn't look like the Star Wars we know. It looks like getting into the nitty gritty espionage, yes, political thriller. That's yep. what it looks like, and I'm all for that. Kind of like that. your Winter Soldier of Star Wars. Yes, like you're yes. Really, yes. especially exactly. when you're bringing yes. in somebody yep, who, right who's there. done mm-hmm. like like Bourne movies. I mean, Bourne movies have always been espionage oh, yeah. and and behind you know like stealthy and, and spies and shit. Mm-hmm. And I've always thought that them exploring something like that in the Star Wars universe, which we saw some of that at the beginning of Rogue One and all throughout the movie. For them to put that into a series, I'm hyped to it. Again, with the talent involved, the people involved, I agree with you guys, man. Exploring like the nitty gritty nature yeah. of the rebellion mm-hmm. and some of the espionage. And again, I mean, the casting is fucking great here. Really good. But Tone, your thoughts? What are you hoping to see? What are you excited about the trailer? I, I, I'm a big fan in Star Wars of the Empire. So like, like to see still the continuation from transitioning into like early Empire things. I mean, you're seeing like look like Lambda class shuttles even I think at yeah. some point not the yep. ones from like the Clone Wars where the wings are in the back I can't remember what those ones are for but Lambda class shuttle anytime I see that that makes me feel nostalgic that makes me feel like Empire or Jedi and things like that it makes so, me think Vader yeah it makes me think Vader for <laughs> yeah. sure so um, Rogue One is my second favorite Star Wars film and will always probably wow. be uh, hand, yeah, literally and it's it's one that I always think of if I'm gonna watch a Star Wars film I'm like I wanna watch a Star Wars film <laughs> It's in the top two or three that I'm going to watch. Uh, it's so good, in, dude. It's, it's, it's so, so good. good because I'm it, the it, the it is yes. exactly. Yeah. God damn it. Yeah. Great, great, great casting there. Because um, part of my thing about Star Wars is that, well, like, I, I get it. Like, there's people out there that go to Star Wars because they like the Jedi. They like all the. Mm-hmm. I'm. I, that's not me, though. My favorite things of Star Wars are the side characters. Um, some of my favorite characters of all Star Wars are old EU characters that aren't even in any of the <clears throat> canon anymore. Some like, of like street characters, some of the smaller things like yes. that. Smaller things are just different characters from different perspectives because it's a big galaxy. There's a lot of great things and stories you can tell that don't always have to be about people flashing lightsabers yes. and moving stuff with their hands. I don't always want that. And that's why I think Rogue One was so, so good <clears throat> was because you get to see just average people dealing with average things that there's this bunch of big things that's going on above them, but that they're 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 dealing with it the best they can in the would ways you say that's a good idea well. to not include the big things because they would have been kind of a distraction from like the kind real of, yeah. good yeah. stuff that's yeah. going on behind yeah. the scenes because yeah, it's not about that yeah, yeah. exactly it's not, yep. it's not about that like taking down Vader and stuff like that that's for the Luke Skywalkers but right. taking out a uh, a communications tower that's for the Andors and stuff yes. like that and that's that's the that's the fun stuff I want to see that's so. that's why Mandalorian uh, originally before it, grew into which i do like that it brought back <coughs> characters that we know and love mm-hmm. but one of the cool things about mandalorian and even like some clone war ep- clone wars episodes rebels episodes is that it dealt with stuff on a smaller scale yes and just going into a city and you have to take care of this uh these stormtroopers that are running the city or this gang that's running the city and whereas i love jedi i love sith i love all that stuff um stuff like this needs to be told mm-hmm. we don't always have to go back you can go to any age you want in star wars and you don't have to touch any of the main characters right because there's so much it's like there's plenty of stuff going on over in the white house but then right down the street so-and-so just got shot and the cops got to figure out who did it you know what right. i mean so yep. there's always a story going on somewhere and that universe is so cool why don't we explore more of it right i think this is really cool and it's mm-hmm. it's like you said it's the the backs the you know the behind the scenes machinations or whatever and mm-hmm. it's just it's cool to me I, I think this if they play it right and they do it right 
this could really be a shot in the arm that Star Wars is. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, it's, it's been hit or miss. To me, it's like an abusive relationship. Like, <laughs> I keep going back and I get thrown down the stairs. Like, tell him you fell. And like, oh, I'm sorry, Kathleen. I apologize. And then, you know, they give you the treat. They give you Grogu and CGI Luke Skywalker. You're like, oh, I love you again. And then next thing you know, <laughs> they give you Boba Fett. You're like, oh, why? Right, right, right. You right. know, so it's like, right. yeah. So I'm ho- sure. Hopefully, this is good to be good. I'm sure probably episode eight of this series will be Mandalorian anyways. <laughs> um, Mando shows uh, Revan said perhaps, <laughs> perhaps they needed to see Boba Fett and Obi-Wan to succeed with less so they could toss more money to these other properties. Uh, I, I guess that, that's what I was trying to say there. Um, I just don't think they like legacy characters. That's just me. Well, it's because they, don't don't, they, don't, they didn't make film. them because exactly. they got to pay royalties. That's all yeah. it comes down to. Um, yep. I definitely agree with that. Do I like Jodo Cast? Yeah, I like the old EU. Heck yeah. Yeah. Uh, Gungan love out there. You can skip all that bullshit. Let's see. It's a love time. No. Um, yeah, it looks like that. Some stuff that so, uh, I definitely like when they use like the Muppets and stuff like that. Like more dun, of the dun, 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 yeah, like practical dun, effects as opposed to. We're just the old guys up in the like, balcony yeah. these days anyways. <laughs> That's not my Star Wars. <laughs> <laughs> the fucking frog. <laughs> Like Luke Sky Talker. <laughs> What's wrong with his face? <laughs> All right, I'm gonna reel us back in. I'm gonna reel us back in here. Uh, I'm hyped for it, man. I think this is, it's got a lot of potential. Is uh, next week? Next week. Next week. Three oh, episodes damn. drop next week, and then we get 12 episodes. So as long as, like you guys said, these aren't 24 minute shorts, we'll be Seriously, all right. God bless Matt Cardona. <laughs> <laughs> Where'd that come from? Dan. <laughs> <laughs> that was so old. That was great. Yeah, God bless him. He's great. <laughs> He's a big fan. All right. So we, that's that's what we got from Andor. That drops again next Ander. Wednesday. Is it next Wednesday? Or no, next Friday. The, the Andalorian. <laughs> Andal- Andalorian. Ah, we got it. Is oh, it 21st? Sorry. Oh, it's that's next sad. Wednesday. So next Wednesday, we'll get three episodes, and then we get 12 episodes throughout the season. Ah, damn. No, I they, they said um, they want this to last a few seasons. That's good, Which, man. That's I good. I don't know if they've seen the ending of Rogue One. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it's not like Diego, Diego, Diego Luna's getting any younger either. Don't None forget, we are. do get Saw Gerrera in this again, too. Lies! Deception! <laughs> you come to kill me, Jim? The bu- what was that thing called? The Buglet? <laughs> the bu- the bu- yeah, the yeah, Buglet. Yeah, yeah. yeah the, whatever. The I love me some no. Forrest Whitaker, man. I love me some Forrest Whitaker. And then him and his eye. All right, we're going to stick with Star Wars. We have another trailer. Oh, boy. I know, I know. Uh, he is hyped about this. Let's check out Fuck the trailer yeah. for Tales of the Ooh, Jedi. God. Everywhere there is life, but you must face death. Honor it. Do not fear it. Jedi. Ahsoka is Jedi. The best way I can protect you is to teach you how to protect yourself. Master Dooku. I want to bring peace and order to the galaxy. Master, stop! It is the only way you will truly have victory. My Padawan. Again. Again. Stand down. I'm tired of fighting. I've been warning them about the coming darkness. Let's hope all that training pays off. Yeah. Why does Dooku look and sound That's like the exact Rickman? same thing we were saying. Dude, that's what I said. Pata. Yeah. <laughs> what are you going to do, Pata? Now, I know you were really excited about this when you saw this trailer, man. What stood out to you? Why are you hyped about um, this? Because Dave Filoni, when it comes to Star Wars, is the man. And he knows it better than anybody that's doing it right now. He's pretty much George Lucas's disciple. And he shows love and respect 
for the Star Wars series. Anything that he has touched, for the most part, has been spot on. The last four episodes of Clone Wars, uh, season two of Rebels, all of Rebels, it's been some of the best shit I've ever seen as far as Star Wars goes. And it feels like Star Wars more than probably anything besides Mandalorian, which he obviously also has a hand in. And then when it comes to like any of the Luke Skywalker stuff, like that episode was his that he did with Ahsoka and Luke, and that was mm-hmm. one of my favorite episodes of. Well, I said I was gonna say Mandalorian, it was both it, but uh, it was Mandalorian. I'm really excited because it's it's I think it's gonna play like um, Visions, to where it's like really short, probably like 15 minute episodes. But I think those short stories like that, mm-hmm. done the right way, just like Visions, they'll be able to tell. A lot. Mm-hmm. And something I noticed too, and somebody else pointed this out, like when you see Ahsoka, Anakin's training Ahsoka with the Clone Wars, that like helps her probably escape in uh, Order 66 mm-hmm. when they show that one episode of Clone Wars and she has to fight all those clone troopers. Oh, shit. Um, and that's, and he's like, again. So that's a really cool thing. But, and plus they get characters like, yeah, Yaddle. You can talk about Yaddle, um, yeah, a yeah. young Dooku. It's just, and then you see uh, that young um, Qui Gon there, and I don't know who that Inquisitor was, but that Inquisitor looked fucking sweet. Yeah. And uh, I just think it, uh, there's a lot they can do with so little. And and I know you give Filoni a little you, in his Star Wars, he's gonna do a great job. Did you guys know that he was uh, one of the producers on Avatar: Last Airbender, the cartoon series? No, I didn't. I didn't yeah, know. and that series is one of my <clears throat> favorite series. And uh, Filoni had a hand in that as well, so exactly. it doesn't surprise me that's why his vision of Star Wars is so good. I think you're right, though. I mean, especially with Filoni involved. I mean, these could be 15, 20 minutes tops, but they can still be lore rich and really like like flesh yep. things out and give people a little bit more perspective in a meaningful way and in, in a lore rich way. And that can go a long ways. I mean, this is only six episodes. Um, I think that's what we have it as. Yeah, six episodes, uh, beginning on October 26th. Tone, what stood out to you, man? Uh, I honestly, there's not much more I can say at what, from what, uh, Rohit said on that. I just, that's the way I look at it too. I know, um, Draston out there, I know he's not with us tonight, but, uh, from some of the old books, like Tales from the Jedi and stuff like that, those names were reserved for some of those. So yeah. there is a small base out there, fans that understandably, because the, the Disney has not handled the old canon very well. Um, you know, they wanted some of those older stories of like XR Kun and stuff like that. So that being said, um, at the very least, they're highlighting some great characters. Again, Floney's involved. I mean, he is. I think the reason why he does such a good job of it is that he's able to keep grumpy old core fans like us still attached to Star Wars by paying proper homage to it without shitting on the past, mm-hmm. but also moving us forward with the new progressive move with some of the Star Wars like stories. So um, he 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 somehow I don't know how he does that balance, but he manages to do it. Keeps us all hooked, you know what I mean. So, yeah. um, kudos to him for that. So, but no, I I think I'm I'm a Dooku guy. Not a lot of people were when I know when Maul got pieced out in uh, um, Phantom Menace. I actually do agree with that conversation that that character should have been had lasted yeah. longer. But now what they've done with him in the long run, <laughs> I think it's the best character. Up, yeah, he Holy is. He really shit. is. Um, but I I love the character Dooku. I love his style. I love that fencing style he does. I just you know I mean it was Christopher Lee. I mean he's a presence. Yeah, so like, for me is, when I yeah. saw Dooku for the first time I was like. Oh shit! Now that's a fucking Sith. That was that was hype for me, like in that sense. So I hope um, they call him Darth Tyrannus in this too, because they don't. Name, get, he only he gets to called that once like one in the movie. Time. That's Lord such Tyrannus. a badass yeah. Sith name yeah. too, man. Yeah, you're t- you're basically a sexual Tyrannosaurus of the lightsaber. <laughs> sexual Tyrannosaurus. That's one right. of the cool things is though too, they can explore things with like Dooku and Ventures. They can explore things with Luke. Um, you know, having Luke, a lot of stuff that maybe after the Jedi stuff that it's gonna you be can't animated really way to do. Way to do it. Yeah, but maybe have like an older Luke and have Mark Hamill do the voice. You know how Absolutely. awesome that would be? And that's something I hope they do with Mandalorian or, or something. They film something with Mark Hamill as an old Luke, and they do a flash forward to have him as Luke Skywalker one more time, but in a, a positive way, the way he wanted to do yes. it. Yes. I yes. hope they do that because do it, and I'm not trying to be funny, but you have to do it before you, you, you got to do it now. Yeah, you, know he, I mean? you really do. Cause you he's really not do. getting any, he's not getting any younger and you don't want to have regrets. And that's why, um, I'm glad they got to do the stuff with Rogue One with James Earl Jones. He's like 90 years old. Yeah, now, dude, you know he's, I mean? yeah. So, and there wasn't even his voice in Obi-Wan. Apparently it was a voice modulator and it sounded just like him. So, Oh they, really? They're, they're, yeah, they, they have to prepare for that. Yeah, they do. Which, uh, but yeah, I'm, I'm very excited for this. 
And uh, I, I can't wait for mm-hmm. Tales of the Jedi. But I agree with you on the book. The, yeah, I love the Dark Horse Tales of the Jedi. Dude, so I can see why people stuff. are salty about that. Totally see that. But I also want more Ahsoka all the time. So. Yeah, <laughs> Ahsoka's awesome, man. You know, that, that you guys mentioned that's the thing we have to start talking about more. And, and it does, it, 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 it bothers me when we start thinking about the greats that are getting close. Like you got to get these scenes filmed because yep. you look at the Harrison Fords. And, you know, I mean, mm-hmm. I, and obviously Bruce Willis isn't as old, but now his situation. His stuff could be, you know, expedited quickly, you know, mm-hmm. depending on how that plays out. We're at that point, you guys, in our, at our age, where we're yeah. going to start losing the greats. You know, when when mm-hmm. I was younger, I used my, my my parents, my mom would always cry when, like, some of the greats from her er- yeah. era died. I was like, what are you crying about? But I'm sitting there thinking about, man, if fucking Harrison Ford drops, I'm going to have to take a fucking week off, dude. Yeah. I'm not going to fucking – I won't be able to make it. That guy was my childhood. Yeah. You hades. Yep. You know what I'm saying? The, the most iconic characters. And I think about that stuff all the time. And it's good as shit. I do too, Bill man. Murray's. Yeah. And, and all, like, at some point, yeah. fucking they're going to go. And you're going to be like, fuck. Yeah. I mean, we got to get Sandlot 2 out there before it. <laughs> Let's do it. They do have a Sandlot 2, and it's terrible. Yeah. It's, it's really bad. Straight to, straight to DVD. <clears throat> Let's go to the next trailer. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Was we're going to move on Hollywood to video. a trailer that uh, we got. We finally got the confirmation. And we talked about the last time we saw a Willow trailer. We're like, hey, we're so-and-so. Johnny Mathis. <laughs> Johnny Mathis Christmas. <laughs> Jeez. That popped me. <laughs> Holy shit. I didn't expect to see that in the chat. Sandlot 2 sucked. It did suck. But exactly. the, I tell you what. No pants, you this jerk. looks fucking dope. Uh, the new trailer for Willow. You think you know what is real and what isn't. What is light? What is dark? Now, forget all you know. Come with me. Willow. We're looking for the sorcerer, Willow. I was told that once long ago you defeated the forces of evil. You remind me of your mother. My dear friend, I thought I could prevent all this. I was wrong. My brother was abducted. The world needs you again. It needs your magic. Follow me. We must go beyond the edge of our world into the unknown. Willow! I need your help. Just like old times. Fuck! Running! Horses! Mayhem! Mayhem! Happy to see Eddie. Our true enemy is still out there, rallying the forces of evil. And the only thing standing in its path is us. I'm going to enjoy this. I feel thinking what I'm thinking, so am I. I doubt that very much. Take him to my tent and make sure he's tied up. I don't know. See, that kind of sounds like we're on the same page. When I was a kid, I used to play at being a sorcerer. Visiting strange worlds, fighting monsters. Run! Never thought I'd actually really do it. What the hell is that? Oh. I'm so miffed. We have to hurry. How will you defeat us? Same as last time. With my friends. Criminally, one of the most underrated fantasy movies of all time. Yeah. Period. Agreed. Yeah, I Period. love Agreed. that movie. Period. And, and a lot of it had Heck. to do with, with, with Val Kilmer as Matt Morgan. He was just he was just amazing. But I mean, it was the whole premise, the whole movie itself. The villain, Incredible. Willow. I mean, everything about it was just, it was fucking great. And you're right. It is criminally underrated. Often there's time people talk about fantasy films. I never hear Willow never get brought up in the conversation. It's just like, how do you not bring fucking Willow up, man? Yeah. Laura Dunn. <laughs> <laughs> Kyle, we can't keep the baby. Uh, you are great. <laughs> uh, hype for this show. I mean, this looks this looks fucking sweet. Uh, yeah, obviously, it drops too. on November 30th. It'll be eight episodes, so I feel like that's good. If it's not, they're somewhere close to an hour. Littleverse. I just, uh, I, I'm hyped for this stuff. Now, we, we were just talking about, as we killed the mics, we do know that Mad Mardigan will play a part at some point. I think it's his daughter that is traveling with Willow. I yeah. think it's his daughter that's playing in the show. And they're going to get the, the brother. But at some point, the producers did say, 
they will have something to do with Val Kilmer, which is fucking great. Because like I just, you have to, you can't make this show mm-hmm. and not have Mad Mardigan in some fashion. He'll show up like Fat Thor. Uh, that's, dude, he, you know what? And I'll be fucking hyped. Yeah, I'll be. I, you, know, I'll be you know what? He's fucking Mad Mardigan. If he wants to get fat and drink all day, he can fucking. Yeah, he earned he's it. earned it. Yeah, yeah he's, he's just sitting at a computer shit. typing. <laughs> This is magic. <laughs> Stop. Flips his sword. Stop. We're going to hell. Stop. 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 Uh, Jesus. Um, <laughs> God, forgive us. Ma- Maverick reference, everybody. <laughs> and totally inappropriate. But uh, <laughs> now you got me thinking about this. <laughs> Willow walks into his chambers. He's just typing on a fucking apple. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's what I got to say to you, Willow. Well, to yeah. me. That's, oh God. I'm not even going to do what I was about to do. Just going to so. watch the viewing count drop. All right. Let's move on now. Or magic. <laughs> Stop. <laughs> That's why we can't have nice things. It's like the, uh, the Ice King game at the beginning of Big. He's playing his computer. He's, playing, he's like, what do you want to do next? Oh, my God. It's <laughs> the final shit. episode of Banter and Babble. <laughs> All right. Let's go out in style. I haven't even touched Rings of Power yet. <laughs> We're going to watch one more trailer. Now, I don't think any of us have watched this one. Have you watched Secret Invasion trailer yet? No, I yeah, haven't. I have. You haven't? Oh, okay. yeah, I definitely you did. Have, we haven't. Let's check yeah. out the trailer Stupid for dummies. Secret Invasion. <laughs> ben- You've been avoiding Earth. But I have called for your help plenty of other times, and you've been pretty content to let those calls go straight to voicemail. Yeah, well, this is different. How much do you know about your security detail? What do you mean, how much do I know about them? Fury, we got to be very careful now. You're in no shape for this fight that lies before us. This is just the beginning. This is my war. Alone. And I'm the last person standing between them and what they really want. And what is that? Secret Invasion. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Now, I am not. F- is this an? Act- is this a storyline that this like- was a comic book storyline? Yeah. Um, a really pretty dope one. It came right after Civil War, wasn't it? It was huge. Was though. It after like Civil it War? was like you didn't know who was a scroll. Oh really? And they they like there were some characters you're like really yeah like oh really dropping, so they, was, they were dropping bombshells <laughs> yeah. when people were scrolls and shit. Which because I don't think there's a lot of big names attached. This could be an issue. Yeah. Unless. This somehow crosses into the actual movie MC, which would be pretty fucking tight. I think if they're smart, they will. And now, see, here for me, I have not been a big fan of Phase Four. Mm-hmm. It's been very um, underwhelming, very underwhelming for me, and also super comedic. And uh, I think a lot of it is because it doesn't have the the A tier players, uh, not a lot of them at least. And my favorite thing about Phase 4 was Spider-Man, which I think that blows a lot of things away, period, yeah. in any phase. But it's mm-hmm. also very hard to follow Endgame and what they built from <clears throat> all that. But uh, It's really hard to follow that up. But <clears throat> I've been wanting something serious, and judging by hopefully this trailer is that, this looked very serious, so I'm intrigued. I, I want to mm-hmm. see what they're going to do with this. And I'm a big fan of Samuel Jackson. So mm-hmm. I want to see what, what happens. 
I think I think Sam Jackson and Ben Mendelson are two oh, actors that can, that can really oh, carry yeah. a, carry a show. Um, obviously, Colby Smothers is in there as well. Yeah, so I mean, back, yeah. <clears throat> I mean, we have a, a we have the casting for it, and I do I do agree with you. I'd like to see something kind of go back to like Winter Soldier. You guys talk about that during the show, or something yeah, that yeah, goes yeah. back to the. You know, uh, kind of like what we saw with Andrew, like going behind the scenes, getting into the nitty gritty, not the the comical, fun stuff, right. the lighthearted stuff. Let's get into some of the the hardcore shit. Give me MCU. some stakes. Give me something that I'm worried about yes. that I think this yes. person's gonna Let die. Me. Yeah, there's exactly. never a movie where I'm like, well, so and so's gonna. I'm, I'm not worried. Yeah, there's no stress involved. There's no like, oh my god, no sense of urgency. There's no nothing sense like, of urgency. Yeah, there's no nothing at, like immediate danger. Like, right. yeah, the building, uh, the music's pumping, so I guess it's supposed to be like, oh god. Right. But at no point at this phase, anyways, have I ever right. been like, man, there's a lot, lot on the line here. They certainly didn't take it very serious in the last Thor movie. I mean, they, no. they you know, yeah. you had Gore the God Butcher, who he was awesome, man. Yeah, I and and like they weren't urgent enough to get, you know. Yeah. That should have been their first thing. It's never felt like. And I liked that movie, but I didn't expect anything. Of it. I just I, didn't I, love it. I didn't. You're absolutely. I correct. felt like it was Ragnarok, yeah, yeah. but they they went over the edge. Like, yeah, I feel like Ragnarok yeah. was that right, the right. right balance for Thor. They had found mm-hmm. the sweet spot yes. for Thor, and then I think it's this, probably because they reined Taika in, and this one they let Taika do they, whatever they, he they wanted. Just do whatever you want. He was yep. just like throwing poop at the wall. And, eh, that's funny. Yeah, right. And I feel like it's a lot cool. of these, yeah, exactly. You know, and we've talked about it before. I feel like a lot of these at Phase Four movies are standalone, like genre specific type of movies, like like like, like the last or like a buddy rom com type of thing. That's the vibe I got from it. Whereas you know the Sam Raimi uh, Doctor Strange, very much a Sam Raimi film, and you know right. each movie is kind of had its own thing. It doesn't feel like it's all a part of one overarching story. Like it just feels like these are all self-contained stories, but we have no again. And, and I know Tony, you you destroyed me. Uh, yeah, I'm it, definitely sick of that conversation. I, I, and I know I'm you kidding, are, kidding, but kidding, but at kidding. the same at the same time, like I feel like we're at that point now where like I let's kind of get into one direction so we know where we're going with this. I hope Secret Invasion is kind of like that point. Like okay, look, it's time to start honing things in and, 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 and pulling it a little bit tight, tighter and, and just and, and just making it more focused mm-hmm. in, a, in an overarching story. Well, I think Wakanda Forever will kind of do that too. I do think, um, I hope so. I think you're right. I think that I'm we're, I think that it's one. really going to be kicked into high gear though with um, some of the stuff that's coming out about Quantum Mania right now. It's pretty fucking wild. Yeah, yeah Kang, uh, I heard stuff. like Kang is, <laughs> Kang's in it. And, well, uh, yeah, Kang's definitely in it, but like. Some of the Ant-Man Wasp one, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah like, like it, it's going to like, I think that's going to be the 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 one that's going to be because we know Kang's pretty much a big you know big part of yeah. like you know the the whole um uh, uh fuck I can't even think of what it's called right now but um that's going to be the one the, yeah the whole that that whole yeah. situation um that's going to really put the foot on the gas which will be technically when you think about it from phase wise about a year and a half from Shang Chi Eternals time frame so you know um I I th- again I think that's that's going to be the big one that's going to like all of a sudden like you're going to go like Oh shit! And it's gonna be the one that's gonna open up that fucking door. Like yeah. I think, I think with like Doctor Strange and Spider Man and Loki and everything, like again leading up to you know the multiverse idea, I think they've opened the door and they opened it up a little bit more. But I think Quantum Mania is gonna fucking kick the door down, right. and that's gonna kick off. Like I think you're gonna your over arc's coming really soon. I think that's gonna be this the movie. Is, so basically, Phase Four was just building up these, like you said, well, not the like A tier characters, right, but well, building up some of these smaller right, characters, well, getting them prepared for the big. Yeah, push. it's like I said before, mm-hmm. like it took them. X amount of years to even give you an idea they were kind of building the Avengers, and then it took more years to figure out, oh, the overall arc was Thanos. You know, it, we were, we're only a year, you know, about a year and a half past, what, what is it? Yeah, just over a year past from, you know, this phase kicking in, so they're they're just laying out the breadcrumbs right now, but I think we're going to get there real soon. My, I think Quantum Mania. My thing on that, though, is the first phase of movies were banging. <clears throat> Whereas anything they set up so far has not been. What's harder to would be B tier characters and, and compared that's, to the Captain that's America. The, that's the problem. However, Black Panther was a BT B tier character, mm-hmm. and they they did a great. It's it's uh, to they, me, it's, they it's, did a great job building love to nature. It's how mm-hmm. you do it. Like Captain Marvel, I don't think what's her face helps whatsoever. Um, God, did you see her recent interview? Yeah, yeah she's and... she's ah she's a she's problematic. Yeah. That that lady's problematic. Like she is problematic. That's not who you want waving your flag. What they ask her like, do you are you gonna be back? And she's, she's like, like I don't know. Do Does anybody want me? Like, shut up. <laughs> shut up. No, they don't want you. Give it to somebody else that actually 
know us how to do PR and not be whiny. <laughs> Get the fuck out of here. Gosh, so annoying. I hate people like that. Like, stop it. You're getting paid all this money and you're being like, yeah, you know yeah. what I mean? Stop being that way. Like, if you're abrasive and, and passive aggressive and just rude about stuff like the way you i can't even get on that like she's just <laughs> shitty attitude wrong person representing your brand right there and and she doesn't make it she's the like when we talk about rings of power it relates to kind of how yeah. handling yeah. your people and that is not a good way to do it <laughs> but um i worry about black panther because those are some mighty big shoes to fill and yeah. i don't think whoever they get in that role is going to fill them that's why it's tricky. There's a lot of people out there. It's like a split. I feel like out there. I don't care about there's Shuri. people. There's people yeah, that I'm want saying. them to recast to be able to have mm-hmm. one, uh, and there's other people that say don't. So it's like it's it's and they decided, of course not. It's I a think, damned if you do. Damned I think if, you don't. if they should either a bring back Michael B. Jordan. That's where mm-hmm. I think they're going. Or b have two. Have one Shuri and one Maku. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Have two Black Panthers. That trailer though, it got me, and I know we're going off topic, so I apologize. No, you're going to do Bambo for one. Angela Bassett, oh, her yeah. acting ass. She's so good. She's amazing. When she's just giving that small speech, and mm-hmm. you can feel that emotion, mm-hmm. I was like, oh, See, he's God. right about that. You keep talking about consequences and stuff like that. I think if you brought back Killmonger, that... That, that negates what we say about having those consequences. Because that's true. That's the thing no, about you're that. Right. You're that's, absolutely that's correct. That's why yeah. I, don't, I don't want him back because, like... But this is, like, a special sure, reason, but, you know what and, I mean? And, but I do agree. Fair, Stop, don't bring back people that got killed. Right, and, but yeah, it is I comics. Do agree. Like, yeah, it is. You know, so, I mean, it's not without their own possibility, though. So. But obviously, they're not going to recast that role because we see the mural of him, unless they do some weird time jump to where his son ends up taking the well, mantle. Well, I think, I think she's pregnant. She is, but his kid. Well, I think the kid's in the movie. Okay, but he's like probably like five. Mm. Be so sweet to get like a fucking eight year old Black Panther like running around kicking shit out of people. <laughs> isn't funny. there? Isn't there a comic storyline though where Killmonger's character actually does become Black Panther? Isn't it? I thought there's one of wasn't them that in, in um, Baku um, the, the what if the what if what if? I mean, could they explore that? Through the, no, I mean, maybe. is that a way they could? Ex- I mean, obviously with the multiverse available to them, they could, they could do that. Where they find that that timeline where yeah, that's true. He's yeah, not multi- a yeah, they're talking about it out there too. Yeah, what's that? About you know multiverse and shit. I feel so. like that's. Yeah. I mean, that's how you can do it. That's how you multiverse. Can do it. You gotta be tricky with the multiverse because that's something. That's scapegoat and retconning. It is. But it's you like don't. A you don't create that to not use it. True, but it is like True, star, yeah. it's like the Force and new Star Wars movies. It's like it becomes a Deus Ex Machina. But like you said, special situation. Right. Oh yeah. Well, for that. This, this yeah, is the. Yeah. I feel like this is the one situation where no one's gonna be like, oh, that's a fucking crutch. No, right. I think this is one situation where you can be like, look. Yeah. We're not going to abuse the multiverse. We're not going to do it to appease the fans. This is that one rare exception. Like, look. I, I see that. You yeah. know, Michael B. Jordan is a hell of an actor, and if anyone can take on that role and, and, and do it, you know, in a, a great job with it, it's gonna be him. Right. And the multiverse kind of allows them to do that. But uh, I agree with you guys. Like, I don't want them to lean on that mm-hmm. and, right. and, no, you're right. and yep. use it all the time. But I feel like this is that one special situation where like I don't think and I don't think anyone would really be mad about it. Honestly, I don't even know I, I honestly I don't know what the purists would think. But I just feel like in this situation, I think it'd be very difficult for anyone to be like, oh, that's bullshit. I don't mm-hmm. think there's anybody that would fucking say right. that. Well, whatever they did, they did it already, and we'll find out when the movie comes I'm out. Just, so. I'm more, I'm, I mean, I'm just excited about a version of Namor. Yeah, he looks yep, sweet. Yep. And also, another actor from Narcos, who I loved. Mm-hmm. Ooh, Terrence and he was, he was great in Narcos. He was uh, Rafi. Oh, is he and in Narcos, too? The yes, guy that plays? Okay. man, he was excellent yeah. as Rafi. And uh, he just has this raw charisma when he's on screen, mm-hmm. and I think he'll bring that as Namor. And uh, mm-hmm. I'm very, I'm very. I feel Did the same. Did anyone see Terrence way. Howard doing that weird math shit? That interview. I don't know what he's on, man. But this, he thinks he's a genius, and maybe he <laughs> is. But he sounded like he was like breaking down quantum physics. I don't know. It's. I watched these guys called Double Toasted, and they were talking about it. It was some of the weirdest. I, weirdest stuff. I'm like, I don't know what's wrong with this dude. Yeah, something's wrong with him. Yeah. You guys talk about, you know, guys who have that bravado that's going to come to the MCU. I, I feel the same way about the guy who plays Roy Kent in um, Ted Lasso. He just won an Emmy. He's He played in Hercules. Hercules yeah. He's going to be our Hercules going where he was at the end of Thor. Oh, yeah. I didn't, uh, I d- I've never seen that. Ted Lasso I, is, is, is a fucking amazing show, but yeah, he is a really a good Emmys, actor. Yeah. And he actually just brought, I mean, he is one of those guys that when he's on the screen, you're just like locked in. Like, okay, this guy's going to say something that's right. just, he's impactful. He knows how to carry a scene. 
So uh, I'm really looking forward to seeing him on the screen as Hercules. I mean, they have – these might be, like, B-tier characters or whatnot, but they have A-list, perfor- like, people that can help they, elevate here's those the characters. Thing. They can be B-tier characters, but m- my thing is that they have not – Brought, made them a tier. Guardians of the Galaxy. Uh, uh, do you think it's A-tier. more material? Yes, yes, it's who's doing the movie. Yep. Who's the actor? The writing and, and who's everything. the director? Yep. That is, because Guardians of the Galaxy. I remember like that first. They I was like, how is this gonna work? A talking a lot of people were like that. And then I remember when I saw the trailer. I was like, oh man, this looks interesting. <laughs> yeah. And then I saw the movie, and those one and two are two of my favorite Marvel mm-hmm. movies. And so it it just you can make it work, but. You just have to have the right people in those roles, and I think Marvel's been kind of hit or miss with that as of late. So, Charting. you know, Zach Dynamite, he's here, he's there, he's fucking everywhere. He's Roy fucking Kent. <clears throat> yeah, really excited for that. Um, like I said, they, they they have the talent involved, but like you said, it needs some material, it needs some a yeah. little bit more focus. But we'll see. But uh, Secret Invasion, I think that looks dope, and I think it has a lot of potential. I hope so. Yeah, hope it's good. So now that we got that out of the way. Here we go. Oh, he's he's getting he's getting, getting comfy. Ready. He's got to do a little stretching. Ah, he's got to yeah. do a little flexing. Do some. It's time to move on to the big one. Do some the kegels, topic. Maybe do some kegels. <laughs> some kegels. Whatever. Whatever they're called. Kogels. Let's talk, baby. <laughs> it's time to talk. Lord of the Rings, the Rings of Power. Yo yo. We are three episodes into this, uh, the, the first season. This will be semi spoilery free. Depends on how uh, uh, I'll go. I'll, I'll try not to spoil anything. It, it just depends. How, when the ball gets rolling, it's like it's like an avalanche. You yeah, just it can't is. stop it. No, it just it just no. it just happens. Uh, but we are three episodes in now. Look, um, I'll tell you guys yeah, now. Cuddles. That's what a lot of people have been saying too. My experience, my knowledge of Lord of the Rings are the three movies. I haven't even seen Hobbit, and now just starting to watch this. That's my perspective. You never These, read the books as a kid. <laughs> I, don't, I, I read Archie. Swine. I read Archie comics for no, the most didn't. part. You didn't, yeah, I didn't read. You don't even read. Hey, dude, I like the guy that ate all the hamburgers, man. He was cool. Yeah, was boy. Uh, Bluto or Blimpo. No, or that's not <laughs> fucking that Popeye. That's Popeye. Yeah, I know. That's what I was doing. That <laughs> I was thinking, yeah, I was thinking that's that's that too. Yeah, yeah. Was it Jughead that ate all the fucking Jughead ate yeah, all the fucking yeah, hamburger. Rubble, rubble. So you watch the what is it called? Um, it's on Netflix, but it's like Archie, but it's like oh, all uh, dark and CW now. It's the name, oh, of, the, the, it's uh, same name of the town. Is yeah, the name of the River, 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 Riverdale, Riverdale. 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 Yeah. There's, there's, people are insane about that show. Oh, they're fucking losers. Yeah. Well, Speaking ah. of losers, so I am not a diehard Lord of the Rings guy. These dorks are. <laughs> You'll see what happened is when Fandor created a Cimarron. <laughs> so we're going to have some different perspectives here. Uh, but the, the, this is the main reason, obviously, we love having him on, but we know that he's very passionate very about passionate. Uh, Lord of the Rings. And this is a show that you were excited for, but also very kind of like skeptical about because yes. of it's basically everything we heard about up to the launch of the show. Certain licenses they didn't have access to, certain storylines and characters they didn't have access to. How are they going to make this work to appease the fans and still make it entertaining where it's not a distraction? And I think going into it, we knew it was going to be a tough act to juggle. Sure. And, you know, we're three episodes in. Uh, from my perspective, I do feel like, I know you mentioned this, and people said it's a slow burn. I do think it is a slow burn. But I treat this kind of like how I treat um, House of the Dragon right now. Even though House of the Dragon has had some some better, like, build-up scenes, like, like oh, shit, moments. It's even though, moments. <clears throat> even though it's, moments. yeah, it's still building up. I mean, it, it, I will still say House of the Dragon is a slower burn than what we said out in Game of Thrones. A lot of politics, a lot of bullshit, but there are still some scenes that are like, mm-hmm. oh, shit, that's fucking dope. This show, like we talked about before we went live, doesn't have any of those scenes yet, but from a character perspective, I like, I'm curious to see where they're going with it. I'm Some of the storylines I'm into, some of the storylines I think need a little bit of help, and maybe that will as the story continues to grow. But as somebody who has not read the books, I don't feel like I'm wasting my time with it just yet. I'm, okay. I'm, I, I'm in it to see where it goes. You, you know, at the end of the season, if it's fucking trash, <laughs> I know he's, he's going to fucking flip this fucking table. He's going to be like, what the fuck are you talking about? No. Um, I, I'm curious to see where it goes. I, I'm, I'm invested. I dig what I've seen so far, but that's all I'm going to talk about. I'm going to just slide over here a little <laughs> bit, get some distance. But let's, let's, let's look at it from a, a multiple different perspectives. You know, first, there's, there, we have a couple of, of like bullet points here that we want to touch on, but I don't want to also tell this guy, slow down. I want him to right. go. I want him to go crazy. 
Let's go first, just initial impressions of the first three episodes. As a show, if you compare it to um, House of the Dragon, House of the Dragon, their characters, Rhaenyra, mm-hmm. has depth. She sure, has, she's absolutely. She's multi-layer. Yep. Galadriel in this show is one-dimensional. She is your traditional, modern-age, female badass, and I'm not trying to say femme power is bad and nothing like that, so don't, you know, don't go on Twitter and cancel me just yet. <laughs> um, I'll give you plenty of other opportunities for that in this, yeah. in this spiel. But, uh, no, her character is one-dimensional. I love, is it Kate Blanchett? Yeah. I mm-hmm. love her portrayal oh, as Galadriel. And I also love Galadriel in the books. In the second age, she is not a main player. This is the age we are in right now. They have taken the appendices... And some notes from Tolkien, because that's all they had the rights to, among some other things. And they have taken liberties, and they have created whatever the fuck they've wanted to. I have a problem with that. Galadriel is not some Red Sonia hell-bent on revenge. That's Feanor. They've literally took his story and put it on her. It would, and let me go back to what we were saying. Um, her character is one-dimensional, Okay. Uh, Rhaenyra on Game of Thrones is not. Damon on Game of Thrones is not. The king is not. He's a flawed king. The only people on this show that I have cared about so far have only showed up in two episodes, and that's Elrond and Durin, mm-hmm. the dwarf and Elrond. Yeah. And mm-hmm. that's about the characters. This show... The first two episodes of a show, even Game of Thrones, the very first one, it had the White Walkers right at the beginning sucked you in. And then at the end, Bran gets, you see that the brother and sister are banging, and then Bran gets pushed out the window. It sucks you in. This show, after three episodes, has not sucked you in. Even if I wasn't a fan of the book, I would be like, or books, or the stories, the writings, I'd be like, this is a very slow burn. Mm -hmm. I fell asleep during the second oh, no. episode, no. and I've wanted to watch this, even though I've tried my hardest to be like, I know they're not going to make it like the book. I know they don't have the rights to Cimmerillion, yada, yada, yada. Here's my thing. If I invite you guys over to my house and I say, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make you guys beef stew, and you tell me you want green peppers in it, you tell me you want carrots, you guys both tell me you want a certain cut of beef, and then when you come to my house, the only thing I have is broth in a pot... <laughs> And I say, here's your beef stew. Eat it. And if you judge me, you're racist. You would tell me, get the fuck out of here. I, why would I make it in the first place? Because I don't have all the ingredients. So why would I make it? You shouldn't make it. All they have done is take certain things, take certain sentences, and they have twisted it into their vision. This is not a, 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 a reporter had said this is vaguely based on Tolkien's work. They took offense to it. They're like, oh, no, we are we're adapting his work. We feel like the story's speaking to us. No, it's not. It is vaguely based. This is not an adapt- Anytime someone says based off of, they're full of shit. Because this ain't based. All they did was take... This is like if I took Dragon Ball Z and made it into the movie you saw, <laughs> yeah. Evolution. <laughs> All I did was take some characters that you already knew totally made them characters that who they weren't, changed their story, changed their origin, changed this, and fucked it up. That's what they're doing. You can enjoy the show. That's on you. I'm telling you why. And then anyone that doesn't enjoy the show is called a racist. It's a, shut up. Like, seriously, shut up. There's like a small, very vocal minority that is actually racist. The show's shit. And then for years, if you recall, when they advertised this, they didn't tell you what they were covering. And then one time they showed you a map of the second age and everyone's like, oh, it's the second age. Oh, and then it wasn't until right before the show premieres that they're they're screaming, oh, we have a diverse cast. Man, I don't care who you got. You can have green real elves playing elves. I don't care if the story the story sucks and your production isn't great. I don't care. It doesn't matter what color or who you got represented. All that. Then you're just. You're just giving me buzzwords. You're just, oh, we have representation. We have people of color doing this. That don't matter. It doesn't matter. Like, yeah, it's cool that you're giving people of color and representation and all that good shit. If your story sucks, then it don't do them no good. Mm -hmm. Because all you're doing is pandering. All you're doing is forcing. You're just injecting your political views. Peter Jackson's Lord of the Rings, 
He took out a whole bunch of stuff from the book. However, he did not inject his political views. He did not sit there and fight with fans. He did not sit there and say, no, this is, this is, this. No, he st- his movies still kept the spirit of the books. That's the point. All these people did was have this hubris and say, you can't judge us. Any fans that have con- constructive criticism, they shit on. Amazon blocked reviews. Yeah. It's like, it, how do you handle this? All you're doing is shooting yourself in the foot. And then these fans that are like, oh, if, if nothing, everything's not going to be like the book. Man, fuck you, because there's not one person in that chat, not one person at this table, not one person watching that doesn't love a certain character, a certain comic book, a certain TV show, a certain movie, a certain video game, a certain sports team, and when someone takes it and they totally go left when they should have went right, you get pissed. So don't tell fans that are fans of this lore and this material to eat shit and accept it because they're not going to because that's the wrong way you handle things. When people judge my wrestling, especially my peers, I don't go, oh, no, 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 you can't say that, or you're racist if you're judging me. No, it's constructive criticism. I see what they have to say, and I look at it, I can get better. If you sit here and you don't judge something or you don't give it constructive criticism and you don't listen, how are you going to get better? How are you going to grow? You're just literally going, la, 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 I can't hear you because I don't want to be, you can't make fun of my stuff or you can't judge my stuff. You can't give me constructive criticism. It's, it's terrible. And it was snake bit as soon as they started doing that, mm-hmm. as soon as they started hyping up the wrong stuff. Um, Galadriel is supposed to have a husband, Caliborn, nowhere to be seen. People, you always want to make fun of people saying, oh, you guys are talking about Mary Sue. She Mary Sued her ass through the first two episodes. Killed that ice troll with ease. Like, then why do you need anybody else if she can just run through everybody like that? She, They went to that place that no one could ever discover, and she knew what this was. She knew what that was. She wasn't wrong. Number one, Galadriel is one of the, supposed to be one of the oldest elves on the show. So... Uh, Gilgalad, the king, would not disrespect her like that. Elrond would not disrespect her like that. They would respect her because she was there when the trees were there. She was there when they were fighting Morgoth. And she was there when Feanor, this is a whole bunch of first aid shit that's really deep. <laughs> she was there, okay? She's not, she's, they call her the man maiden. They call her Amazonian because she's supposed to be just as tall and as, le- as, as, as athletic as, as the male elves. She's not Red Sonia. She's more of a, if this was D&D, she'd be more of an enchantress, a magic user, than she would be doing any of this stuff. Harfoots, they're just another version of hobbits. hobbits. They are hobbits. There's like four different ho- like races of hobbits. But these people are like, oh, they're not hobbits. Tolkien says they're fucking hobbits in his book. Hobbits don't show up until the third age. Ilsuidor does not show up yet. He's They're literally mixing timelines. They're adding characters that aren't even there yet. They're taking away characters. This is why I don't like the show. It's not because they changed some things and they created some characters. You have to create some characters because you know Galadriel's not going to die, so anything she does, there's no tension. You know what I mean? It's like having Obi-Wan in the Obi-Wan series being under like pressure. You know he's not going to die because you know what happens. It's a right. prequel. So you have to create certain characters so there is tension because you don't know if they're going to die or not. That's fine. They tried to build up this shit with her and her brother. Finrod is his name. You didn't even, they didn't even name him in the first. They didn't the They didn't, exactly. So why would you, don't so, even make a show. So Don't even make a show. Make your own fantasy show that you want to. Well, they are. Can, no, yeah. And then, but don't, make your own, but don't. They are. Don't, yeah, they are, but they're using a, a beloved don't, IP. Like, stamping that Lord of the right, Rings right. on it. Yes, like, so. and it makes me so mad. If you enjoy the show, by all means, enjoy the show. But this is why I fucking hate the show. This is this is like taking the helmet off Master Chief. So, <laughs> yes. so when we talk, so now when we talk about these sort of things, so like uh, to point out, they spent so about two hundred and fifty million dollars to buy appendices, portions of all this stuff. Oh, they yeah. spent a billion dollars to make the show look good. The show looks, looks fucking great, great. for the most great. part. There's awesome. some CG question here we're going to talk about because I'm pretty sure the actor that played the weasel in Suicide Squad <laughs> two. Ended up in this uh, ugly, fucking ugly, series. Ugly Sonic. Yeah. Ugliest ugly fucking, Sonic. yeah, ugly Sonic. <laughs> Ugliest fucking war guy I've ever fucking seen. Now, $250 million for some of these properties. A billion dollars for the show to look pretty. Great. Scores great? Yeah, yeah scores great. So, so $250 yeah. million dollars that literally Bezos wipes his ass with in his gold toilet on his yacht in, in like, the Mediterranean. They can't spend a couple of hundred more fucking million get and get thing. everything yeah. from the Tolkien estate. Why would you not have the Silmarillion? So then you're telling these stories. You're going through all these characters and stuff like that. But like you said earlier, they're dancing around names. They're dancing around events. 
They're calling stuff other shit. They're making up fucking characters, which you said sometimes has to happen. Slow burns are great, but it's got to be compelling. That's the problem. This is not compelling at all. This literally feels like you're talking about one dimensional Gladriel. God, the so show and most of the characters in this feel one dimensional. Yes. I keep saying the word husk is what I keep coming to. I keep thinking yes. like I keep thinking yeah. like you're shucking corn or something and the corn's <laughs> missing in the middle. Yes. That's what it feels like. It's honestly. lifeless. It's right. a soulless show. And the best oh. thing so far We'll get to that. Best thing so far is exactly what you said. As soon as I saw Elrond and heard his name, I'm like, oh, I'm excited. Elrond's here yep. because Gladriel's already disappointing. Yep. She, I mean, honestly, Gladriel for me, I'm not big. I'm a big elf fan in, in like fantasy generally. Dude, she's angry. She's bitchy. She's shitty. She's dude, entitled. She's impatient. Dude, she's a shit lead she, character. She's, she's, she's a, not. But what they've made her into, right, it's like a person why in the book would you? The story, and yeah. you can't say, oh, right. she's a young Gladriel, motherfucker. She's like thousands of years old. She's older than all the other elves on the show. Right. She's not young. She's been in. Plenty of battles. She was there in the the War of Wrath, and she should be with her husband right now. I just it pisses. There's she so wasn't, much. Stuff. And she's not even the one that's on Sauron's ass. It's Gilgalad that knows that Sauron's there, and he's the one that writes out letters and puts the call to arms. Gladriel's with her husband. Her kid probably should be around too, but no, they took all that away because they have to have this. They're injecting their bullshit into it. Ah, it just makes me right. So, mad. so like Elrond was exciting. Like you said, Durin was exciting because <sighs> I was a big fan of when they went to Casa Doom, when, which is the, the the actual dwarven name for the Mines of Moria. You can like the show. I don't and think it's fine. it was. It, I mean, I you could tell they had a billion dollars. That was the first time seeing in that show in the, in the second episode where I felt like, holy fuck, they spent some crazy money to make this look good. Because when you're yeah. inside Casa Doom and it's not dark and shadowy and you can see everything, it's at like its peak. Or whatever, it, it was fucking gorgeous to look at. It was amazing, right? And you're also getting to see Durin. I mean, you don't see or you know, you hear more about Durin than anything, right? You know, Durin's bane. You know, well, there's and there's plenty of there's like three or four Durins or some shit. So I don't know. What but I'm Durin pretty sure he's got to be. Well, he's got to be the main Durin. I'm gonna I would, guess. I would think so. And, and dwarves live a long time too. So I don't understand like the twenty years. They thing. don't live as long as no, elves. But I thought no. that was weird too because twenty years is a blink of eye for, for either for, of them. For either of them, dwarves yeah. live typically, I think, just under a thousand years, like eight to yeah. nine hundred years old. Where dwarves will live thousands of or centuries a year, whatever it is, millennium or whatever. But yeah. I digress in that. However, yeah, right. Um, but I, I just, I just cannot believe that. They 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 had the potential with all of those things out there that Tolkien had. They didn't spend the money on that. So why why are you telling the story? Like wh- like I want to know. I want to look at somebody and say, what's the point then? Because you don't have the Silmarillion. You can't you can't tell all this accurate stuff. You're dancing around it. Yep. You won't say specific names of things. Yep. Like furthermore, what are like, some of the names that they've skipped over? Uh, they well they can't call more they can't go too much on the Cimmerillion. Yeah. The first like when she tried the, to the, the do the exposition, she talked about the two trees and all this shit. It goes that thing is so deep. It has to talk about Morgoth. They can't talk about Ea. They can't talk about the Aenir. They can't talk about like the Maya. Yeah, they're not, uh, they're not they, talking they, about they, any of they that. They didn't say shit. anything about Ungoliath, who is Shelob's like mother. She's like the this dark. She's like was a dark spirit that took the form of a giant spider. Yeah. Um, they yeah, did yeah. talk about Fain. Fainor is this badass elf that rebels against the. And here's another thing: they made the elven culture in the show like Rome. Like there are these snobs. Yeah. Yes. Like there's all this yeah. political. There's. It's like the elf. It's like a blissful place. Like there would be no stupid bully kids. They just. They're creating that. Oh, oh, she's tough because she got bullied. No, the fuck. That's not. That's not how that. Oh, it's elves just, don't act that way. It, no, and they're like, it's blissful. It's mm-hmm. blissful. They're not. Mm-hmm. They may act that way to other races, but they don't like not. To, they're m- mostly turn up their nose. They're not bullies. It's just stupid Hollywood tropes. And then them, uh, uh, Gilgalad and fucking Elrond trying to give uh, uh, Galadriel shit. No, that is. It's just mm-hmm. them fabricating this nonsense to push this message that oh, ain't no man could hold her down. Like stop that shit, man. Just tell a good story. You said it's a husk because this is a cash grab. It is them taking IP and thinking, and then they the the showrunners have said, "Oh no, this is this is for the fans. This is for the blah 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 blah." But anytime they get called out for a lore question, they act shitty about it. They have flat out lied about certain things. They have said, "Oh, but." He, you know, he's, and I don't care if you want to make Elvis Black cool. You want to make Dwarves Black. I don't, honestly, I don't care about that. That's awesome. That's great. You know what I mean? But don't have that be your marketing point. You, if once you start marketing diversity, to me, you're just forcing it. Then it's not real. It's you not, feel like that's an insult? It's, yeah, it is an insult. To me, you're just pandering. Like, well, like we said, like the homeless person 
you feeding a homeless person and then you record it, you put it on Instagram. Oh, look what I did. I did something good. Right. But it don't mean shit. You're just doing it because you want to get clout. Mm -hmm. That's all. You're you're not doing it for the right reason. You're casting people. You're not hiring the right people for because they were the best person for the role. Mm -hmm. And it's just then it's just like it's nonsense to me. Um, And like I was talking off the, the thing. If you write a good character, it doesn't matter what color they are. It doesn't matter what they are. I relate to Rocky Balboa. I'm not Italian and I'm not white. But Rocky is that underdog. He fought. He came from nothing and made it. And he fought and he was a good fucking person. It didn't matter who, what Rocky was. It mattered who he was. There you go. If you have a good character, I'm going to relate to it. We can all relate to Ripley from Aliens because we're not Marines and we weren't going out there, yeah. but we'd be scared as shit. But we'd have to figure out something to to make it work. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? It's it's if you make a good character, it shouldn't matter what the color is. Just cast the right actor or actress and go from there. Stop pushing this. Oh, hey, we're diverse. Look at us. And you, it, like Peter Jackson didn't inject his politics into his trilogy. And there is a money grab. And then there's a passion project. And there's the show, which I absolutely love, that has diversity. That has politics that don't smash you over the head. And it got canceled right after it won an Emmy in his Dark Crystal Age of Resistance. And it's one of the best fantasy shows that you could ever watch once you get past that they're puppets. But they tackle racism. They tackle classism. They tackle yeah. politics. But they do it to where they're not beating you over the head with it. And you had a good thing about uh, the Black Elf, how yes. they were like, and I'll let you tell, and I'll tell you, have you tell that. But Dark Crystal, even if you never watched it, it's such a great show. It was very expensive to make, and they ended up canceling it because it didn't. I, I think it did well, but like I said, it won an Emmy, and um, that is a passion project compared to what this is. Is a cash grab. They had a well-known IP. They didn't give a fuck what it was about. They took these characters and they changed characters. They added. They mixed all this stuff up just to tell the story that they wanted to tell. Not only that, but they tried to t- like speak. Uh, Tolkien dialogue and it sounds like a 14 year old trying to write poetry and while he's horny or something like that it just sounds <laughs> and some of the dialogue is it's just shit and it's like hey this is pretty deep no it's not you're just trying to sound smart and it sounds dumb Cuddles, but, uh, Cuddles says I didn't know elves couldn't do black until TikTok told me that this week <laughs> yeah and, and here's the thing too like in the beginning of the show Galadriel's brother says I'm not going to be around forever why would he say that Elves are immortal. Like they would not know. They don't know. And there was no war at the time, so there wouldn't be anything about death because they don't know anything about death. And even she, the sentence she says right afterwards, "Oh, we didn't have a word for death." No shit, you didn't because it wasn't around. So he wouldn't have said that shit. Right. And it is a small nitpick, but that just shows that they're like, "Oh, we love Tolkien. We this is the heart." Of, no, it's not. It is soulless and it's it heartless, is soulless. and it's this whole modern fucking society. If you critique anything. The woman's Ghostbuster. That movie was trash. But if you critiqued it, you were a sexist. The movie sucked. And I don't care. You could have had four squirrels in it. If it was good, it was good. If it wasn't, it wasn't. It doesn't matter. Stop using that as a shield. Take the constructive criticism and make better shit. You, I mean, if you tell me that God. you're gonna make a Ghostbuster movie with Melissa McCarthy and and and, and all those, they're great. And they're all funny those as hell. people, and and you do shitty writing and yes. a shitty story has nothing to do with, the, dude. Those four women could carry a fucking proper. Yes. Book. If you make that yes. Ghostbuster movie back in the '80s with Ivan Reitman with those women, that shit is fucking hilarious because it's smart and they're fucking talented. But they fucked that whole movie up because the story was trash. Right. And it was, like you said, it wasn't subtle with was some a, of the it, shit they were trying to it bash. It should have been a head. reboot, not a remake. Yes. yes. They did. They failed. The writers and the directors and everybody involved failed that mm-hmm. cast because but, that cast was But talented. in modern day society, if you say that, they're say you're part of that m- yep. small minority, that mm-hmm. vocal minority, because it is a minority. But it is, that is a thing. People are sexist and they're racist. But when you have this group, you have the same group. That will sing anything's praises and consume it because it's progressive or whatever, and so it has to be great. No, it doesn't. If it's not good, it's not good. You know what I'm saying? If if it's not good, it's not good. Right. Make it better. Don't write your story around the character. Don't write your your your. Uh, I have to have boxes that you need to check. Just make great characters. Make good shit. Samuel Jackson's Nick Fury is great. It's not because he's black. It's because he's fucking great. That's why. You can put Idris Elba on almost anything. If you give him good writing, he's going to be great. It doesn't matter. Right. Like, stop 
doing this this stuff, it's all you're doing is hurting yourself. You're insulting fans. They did it with Star Wars. They attacked the fans. They were saying the fans were this, that, and the other because they didn't like the way Last Jedi or the sequel trilogy was. Stop hiding behind those cards and start taking responsibility for your shit product. Now, I don't think Rings of Power is absolute garbage when it comes to how they are treating their fans and how they're saying that they're keeping it to the book, the sure. books. No, yeah. you're not. You no, you're not. you took pieces of the appendices, sentences, and notes, and you created this whole thing that has right. nothing to it's do basically with. Basically, a fan fiction. It's a, that's exactly <laughs> what it is. It's a fan fiction. So it, that to me is why I, I can't stand the show because of how they're treating the people and how other fans are gatekeeping, reverse gatekeeping. It's like if you, if your shit's not good, it's not good. Make it better. But I mean, at, at the end of the day, like Rings of Power, like even as just a fantasy, as, as a big D and D player. As a big like somebody who's read tons of fantasy books growing up, including Lord of the Rings, it, it's 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 a again it's a husk. It's it's not it's not very compelling storytelling. And again, I'm going to go back to the the like them them jumping with the storylines and playing around the way they are and and and, and, and the the way they're moving around some of the characters and stuff like that. So again, I question. Why didn't they spend the money and get all this stuff just and just get it and do it properly? Like, why are we, why are we fucking around with all this shit? Like, I feel like at this point they just want to be able to say we've got the next Lord of the Rings stuff, two hundred fifty million dollars we paid for. They're basically How's our Amazon starting Prime? this yep. show very much how Game of Thrones ended. They're starting yeah. this show off on the same footing. That yeah. Game of Thrones ended where they were just like, let's just make shit up. George gave us notes. That's a, George gave us notes of where exactly he thinks it it's going to mm-hmm. end. And we just got to like build everything up in it's between and mind fuck boggling. It. Yeah. This will be on the, TMZ tomorrow. It's, <laughs> it's, it, it's funny because the show in general, too, it has no depth. And what I mean by that, they say, OK, well, I got to go to Casa Doom. Next scene is in Casa Doom. There's no journey. There, it's, it's I gotta go to yeah, yeah, the they West. Just, they just walk. I yes. that was like that too. And like, that was the reason why the, the, the last, so the last, and at least like in Lord of the Rings, these motherfuckers were traveling. Well, and, 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 towards the end, we always wondered like how they get to like dorm. Yeah. Like, how they get over there so fast? That but like, like a, it, Game of Thrones did that. They were just like, well, I gotta do this. And next thing you know, they were there already. It's like <laughs> that took them two episodes to get there. That's like and next like, season, yes. you would get there. And that's and that right there takes away from the depth of your show. Sure. Mm-hmm. And that that to me is like even. If I didn't watch or know anything about Lord of the Rings, it would be a basic fantasy show, and it would be it would be in the middle, um, just because of just those things, the dialogue, some of the acting, the, the one dimensional characters, and but the fact that it's Lord of the Rings and Tolkien's work, Tolkien's work is not that when I first started reading the Cimmerillion, and it's a hard read because there's a lot of hoth thou fit on that shit like yeah, that. And there's yeah. so many, I had to flip back and forth to see whose, house, and stuff. whose house this was and all this shit. Mm-hmm. But the thing is, I couldn't wait to get home from work and read the next chapter. I'd stay up all night reading, and I was, it, it sucked me in. And it's my, out of all the Lord of the Rings lore, it's my favorite. Morgoth, Melkor, Shelob, Feanor, those were some of the craziest fucking stories. Luthien, Baron, the werewolves, the dragons, the balrogs. Oh, my God. Also, if that meteor man is a wizard, I'll also be pissed because they don't show up to the third age and they show up on a boat. God damn it. That makes me so mad. They're just taking shit and be like, hey, member berries. Remember Gandalf? We got him in this show. No, he's not supposed to be there. And he's not supposed to be some mute At like all. that. Oh, it just makes me so mad because... The way they market it and the way they're trying to act like we're here for the fans, this is straight up in the, the spirit of Tolkien. No, it's not. And that's my biggest problem is because you're bullshitting your way through this and you, you, you're, you anyone that criticizes it, you're calling them a phobe, ist, or whatever, and that's bullshit. Take your responsibility. Mm-hmm. If my match sucked, you better believe I'm going right back to the drawing board. Next time I'm going to get in the ring, I'm putting on a banger because I want to put out great product. You have all this money. You guys are, it's the same thing I have, the same issue I have with Star Wars. You have people that don't give a shit about the lore, that don't give a shit about your product. You're just trying to make money off of it, and you're just trying to tell your story with somebody else's characters. We don't want to hear your story. We want to hear a good story. We don't care about what you believe. We don't care about what you, your politics are. We want to hear a good story. Don't beat us over the head with that shit. Stop it. Mm. And again, I go back to Dark Crystal because Age of Resistance, because it did that perfectly, and you couldn't tell. 
It's mm. just because it was part mm. of the story. So it's they a, didn't in, they didn't inject it into the story. It's it's a damn shame because it's Lord of the Rings, and this is what's different <sighs> about you know sucks. we keep we've talked about timelines how they're pushing and merging like third and second ages and stuff. It feels like in some ways, or they're speeding up stuff. This is a lore to to for people to understand this. This is not like Star Wars where like. You've got a lot of openness, and there's a lot of interpretation, a lot of different characters, and things like that. Because a lot of that's not, some of it's not, some of it is kind of written, but some of it's not recognized. This is stuff that is very established. This is established Uh, lore and timelines and things that have been in stone, basically chiseled there for a hundred some years. This Mm -hmm. is stuff that you know, fans like hardcore fans, especially take really serious because it's not like everything else. Like Lord of the Rings isn't on cups or, or play pens and, right. and McDonald's happy meals. That's star Wars and stuff like that. That's a whole different tale, but this is something that's more about that core, that core base of people that have read the books that have invested their time into them. Sim- Similarian is a hard fucking read. Like he said, yeah. there's a lot going on. It's a lot of big words. Dude could not handle reading that. <laughs> <laughs> at all, I'd have to read him to it at night. But, uh, but seriously, no. But it's, no it's, it's 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 a mythos that really takes that sort of stuff seriously, and it's and it's important because those timelines matter when you're moving forward. Yeah. Because there's a lot of things that link because of bloodlines, uh, you know, family wars, all that stuff is very important because. It literally stacks like 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 chips. You know what I mean? Like you got a poker table. Those you got to stack them right. So uh, this is it's, it's really unfortunate that they didn't spend the money for all that material because mm-hmm. it makes this product not feel like not only Lord of the Rings, not even really even great fantasy. It yeah. just feels like a husk. It does you? His work is timeless. You don't need to modernize anything. You don't need to change anything. Mm-hmm. You don't need to add your. Two cents. Spin to it or your a- politics, exactly. Yeah. You don't need to do that because it's already a great story. You don't need to change anything about it. Right. You want to put people of color in there? Awesome. That's great. Do it. That's fantastic. The I stories have no, still be Corliss, good. Tar, Tor, Corliss Valerian and uh, freaking um, Game of Thrones fits in like a glove. You know what I mean? You're like, okay. And that's great. And they write him well. And that actor is, he does a great job because he's a dick he's in that snake? show. Yeah, yeah, you know what I mean, and but that's the thing. Like people had, they were all but heard about it at first, but when the guy came on and he fit in like everybody else. They didn't make it. They yeah, didn't the make story's it. Story's good. Deal. And yeah, his character's great. Yeah, yeah, you know what I mean. It's like, but the the work of Tolkien itself is so good and so respected. You don't need to modernize anything. You don't need to change it. Stop doing that stuff. You Just, can still do the representation thing and still respect the source exactly. material. Exactly. And because and, I mean, honestly, like you mentioned it before the show. If you see a badass black elf, I don't need, you know, I, I'm especially as a person of color, you see it, you're like, man, that's fucking sweet. Yeah. I don't need to see a scene where some dude <laughs> is coming at him, a white guy, who is treating him like shit because he's an elf. Right. But I understand the message you're trying to bash over my head. It's just like, and I mean, as a person of color, when you see that, are you just like, okay, that's... That's not subtle. It's, it's cringy. It's to me, it's cringy. It's pandering, and it's and again, it's like, hey, look what we did. <laughs> right, right, we're, right. We're hip. It's missing the. We're point down at that with point. the message. It's like, uh, but there's so many people out there that are like, they are down with the message. Look what they're representing. They know us. It's like, no, they don't. They don't care. They do they, not they care. They're making money, dude. They want your money. And it just they don't stri- care about your cause. They're gonna pimp your cause <laughs> to get your money and your support. Stop, stop being blind. Stop eating their shit and obeying. Stop it. Think for yourself, please. They don't care about you. They want your money. Read a book. That's, that's it. No, I mean you're not wrong, and and, you know, and it's just like it's you guys talk about it, you know like like why wouldn't they just spend the money got the stuff? But at the end of the day, man, that's where that like the entitlement comes from the people at the top of yes, Amazon. Yes. They sit there like, okay, hubris, we sp- man. Oh, they think because they can say it's Lord of the Rings, mm-hmm. we spent a billion dollars. Be happy. Mm-hmm. Yep. Be happy. That's exactly what it is. And that's what they expect. And they're going to have their fans. They're going to have those people that are going to be like, oh, yeah, they did great. Whatever. That's fine. I just like, look, it's just, it's just, they're we out to make money. Chat. <laughs> Sorry, guys. No, no, no. You're fine, man. No, no, no. Speak, speak like, to oh, it's fuck late. Guys. I am going to say one thing, though. I'm going to go back down here. I'm going to find Tricky. Hang on a sec here. It's Trick to Rock the Rock. Where's Trick at? Well, he said that he can't enjoy the show. No, no, no. 
It might have been. It might have been that comment. He said, "I have to go kill myself now." He said, "I'm gonna go kill myself." Thanks, bro. I like the show. You know what, Trick? Fuck these nerds. Come on over on uh, uh, on Wednesdays. We'll watch it together, man. We'll hang out. Whatever night it comes to Fridays. Yeah, you come over. I'll make some popcorn. We'll be some losers and we'll watch the show and enjoy it together. I will still try and watch it because I'm hoping. Because I'm see, I think that's for punishment. You know, I, I I like. I was. There are some things I'm intrigued about when um, Adar shows up. I don't think it's okay. I'm, I'm gonna say something bad first, then I'll end on a positive. Um, <laughs> because they're they're that's using good. Sauron as a. It reminds me of um, JJ Abrams, mystery box shit. Yeah. Is this guy Sauron, or is this guy Sauron, or is this guy Sauron, yeah, yeah, or is yeah. this guy Sauron? Sauron shows up as he because he's a master of disguise. He can he's a he can morph. Um, he, he should be able to morph to a werewolf and all that other types of cool shit. He's a bad motherfucker, but he likes to do a lot of plotting and scheming. However, he shows up as like, they had like the idea was already implanted for them to make the rings. No, he manipulates all of that. It's not who they had in the show. And that's the type of shit that just irks me. You're changing the story. The boys changed their story in season one. And I read the comic and I was like, Ooh, I don't know how I feel about this. Then I watched season two. They kept the spirit and the characters of the boys. It was still there. They gender swap characters. They race swap characters. But they kept those characters how they were in the comic. Sure. They respected the source material. And it's one of the best shows you'll watch. And they don't give a fuck about anybody mm -hmm. on that show. Mm -hmm. They offend everybody. And I love it. I love it. Because they just mm -hmm. go balls to the wall. Yeah. But um, they do something really cool. Add our... Um, we th Adar might be a one of the original twist because the the orcs and goblins are like twisted elves mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. Morgoth took and he yeah, was Sor Sauron talks about it in the yeah in the original trilogy as well too and it's really cool so we're thinking Adar the guy yeah. they showed that was blurry is actually one of the original mm -hmm. twisted elves but that's oh, cool the guy at the so, end of that yeah so stuff episode. like that like I don't mind that they create characters like I said because you have to create something that has like tension because you don't know you know Galadriel's not gonna die you know Elrond's not gonna die um but like. You don't know about what's his name, Bor? Not I don't say Boromir, but uh, <laughs> the the one elf, the short hair with the sweet fade. Oh, um, yeah. Like um, his friends, that got killed. I didn't give a shit. I don't yeah. even know their names. <laughs> <laughs> they, yeah. they honestly tried to create like this thing with the when the one elf got killed, and I was like, I don't, I don't even know who that is. I, I want to take issue with short haired elves personally, but that's just me. I, I was like, wait, that was I really interesting. That was really, I'm like, I've never seen an elf with short hair. I don't know how I feel about that. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Zach asked, was it a money thing or the token? Oh, I got that one. Hey, with the ask Robert Kirkman when you put a zero at the end of a fucking check. Stingy changes real <laughs> fast, dude. Yeah. yeah. Walking Dead, the TV show compared to the fucking comics all fucking day. Yeah. <laughs> Zeros talk all day. Stingy and that, changes fast. And that right there goes to what I'm saying about lore. Like, there's plenty of people out there that I see that are like, Oh, just shut up and dude, it's not always going to be this way. But I guarantee you, there's something that got changed that you love. Oh yeah, and you pitched a fit about it. Resident Evil fans have been getting fucked for years <laughs> so, since the first fucking yeah. movie. Yeah. Since yeah. the first, the oh, yeah, first like Resident Evil fans, y'all been getting it. And so, trust and me, people keep going back for more. Oh, it's pretty good. Exactly. No, it's not. Like no, it's not and it's out. like so. Don't be that fan that tells another fan to eat shit because they're upset about how something's handled. They have every right to be that way because at one point in time you were that way too, and I've been that way with several things. Yeah, if you invest in that lore, and, man, like if you like it, more power to you. But I don't like how Amazon handled it. I don't like how certain fans handled it. The critics, there, I can't even. I would rather listen to a YouTube critic than any other. Of these you rather listen to banter and babble critics, huh? Hell yeah, because yeah. at least I know, like, besides prey, but yeah, like, <laughs> <laughs> right. we come full circle. <laughs> That was the gimmick of the whole show. Good night, everybody. <laughs> but, but no, like, I really want to like this show. I remember when we first started to see it, I was like, dude, I'm so excited. But then, we were, yeah, we were definitely excited. But, but then it. in the trailer, they even showed a Balrog. There should be no Balrogs, none. So it's just like they're literally just—it's a fan fiction, is what mm. it feels like to me. And to me, yes, I go off on a tangent here and a rant. I'm more disappointed than anything because there was so much potential there that they could have done yeah. with this show. Mm -hmm. Like they had all that money and looks beautiful. Like the orcs look awesome and stuff, but it's like sometimes it looks a little bit too clean. Like it doesn't look lived in. Um, yeah. Almost like the prequels in Star Wars. Like it looked too clean, too glossy. Yeah. Yeah. But um, yeah. it had so much potential and it's just, it's sad because 
they've veered so far off from like original lore that I know I'm not going to like it. Now I'm just watching it to punish If myself. they're doing five seasons again, I got to go back. Why are they speeding up the timelines of the second and the third age? Ma- like, there's Dude, no reason for it. Yeah. Are they trying to just hook people in instantly? Is that what they're trying? Like, and I, I really don't like it's It's, it's, it's babbling to me. It though. does. And this does not tie into Peter Jackson's Lord of the Rings. Like, I remember I was watching that, that screen rant you Ooh. sent me or something. He kept acting like it tied into that. I'm like, this has nothing to do with Peter mm-hmm. Jackson's Lord of the Rings. This mm-hmm. is like a whole different. It's a multiverse is what this is. This me, is an alternate timeline. Let me read this real quick from Zach. Seriously, though, I get the idea of just doing something different instead, but if the family won't actually sell the rights, wouldn't Amazon's hands be tied when it comes to that sort of thing, uh, some of this? Like, could it be what you want if the family sold the rights? Well, no, because some if of the stuff the they right still – they could still – do even the timelines more proper if they didn't get all the materials and if they had to yeah. dance and work around yeah. stuff, they can still kind of do that if they're not allowed to buy that stuff. But again, Amazon is is basically the uh, the fucking money. Yeah, there's bin. no cutoff on like the, how yeah. much can we spend. Right, I'm pretty. I mean, I'm pretty sure like you know Bezos is somewhere in the Mediterranean swimming like Scrooge McDuck. So I, I don't. I still. I just don't like if if they don't sell that, and I truly don't know if they said they wouldn't sell that stuff. If Bezos said, well, "Okay, my kid loves it. Here's another zero. If he said, "Okay, I'll buy it for five hundred million dollars for everything." I don't see them saying no to it. It makes zero yeah, sense. Yeah, like when, to me. You, when you're spending a billion dollars in a show, where, where is the cutoff? There, there isn't point? a cut. Well, that's the <laughs> point. There, is, yeah. there isn't a cutoff. And like again, even if they were just using the materials they got, they could still be able to do a proper justice of it. Of, of not like okay, so well, Galadriel could still be the sorceress type that she was in this age, mm-hmm. or you know, some of these, some of these other characters and names that they haven't used, yeah. they just haven't you know used properly, or again, meshing the timelines. They could still do plenty of things that would do it justice without literally just sitting around in their bedroom as a 13 year old doing fanfic while jerking off they fired the tolkien historian as well on this oh, that's wow. telling too that's that's, that's a that's big that's telling. a big red flag right there because i doubt the guy was being a jerk you know what i mean he's probably yeah. just like what the fuck are you doing well, yes, he was exactly. being a jerk. he's the guy you want to be the jerk yeah though, because he exactly. wanted to be a jerk because he's, he's, he's of thinking it. of the, thor- well, the source it was, material. and it was just back it was just like uh disney let go of the guy that wanted to do the a sequel trilogy scripts he says give me um a year or two and i'll have all three movies you know the scripts written i forgot what the guy was and they said no we need to get this this movie right now. yep they were trying that to money. make that they, they want to get their return investment they were trying to get that return investment right away and instead of watering your tree you just threw the tree out in the sun and mm-hmm. and we saw that happen hey you know what we got five seasons and you know i don't i don't think it'll last five seasons you don't think so no I don't think it'll last five seasons. I think the um, the way they have handled the fan backlash, instead of handling it professionally, they do what modern day Hollywood does and attack fans. The Terminator fan they did it with Terminator fans. Um, they did it with Star Wars fans. They do it with anything, and sometimes it's warranted because there are a lot of stupid people out there that say, "Oh, look, another black character," blah blah blah, and they're saying that because they're dumb. That that is a thing. But there's also people that are like, stop. Like, I don't want you to race. I don't want a black Clark Kent. Give me a, what's his, Cal, Cal, Cal something, a, an actual black Superman. I don't want a white Black Panther. Mm-hmm. I don't want a white Blade. Give me actual characters that are new and real and just as good as the ones you're trying to swap with. Like, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. You make a Batman, don't make him Bruce Wayne, make him somebody else. What if Robert Downey Jr. come back and play Black Panther, though? Oh, <laughs> <laughs> shit. I would, oh, dude, that would be hilarious. Dude. Dude, you, you've seen that in the last year where people yes. were trying to cancel Tropic Thunder because yes. they were offended by the character that he yes. was doing. Ironically... Making fun of that very making thing, fun yeah. of that, yeah. But that's the it, like people are well, just as soon as you know. as soon as I read people trying to cancel Val's Robert odd. Downey Jr. Val's for odd. Tropic Thunder, I was like, wow. <laughs> yeah, you missed yeah. it. You missed the whole thing, dude. Uh, Miles Morales is another perfect example. Like they didn't have a black Peter Parker; they just had Miles, Miles Morales, Morales, which like, or Gwen Stacy. They yep. didn't have a female Peter Patricia Parker. They yeah. had Gwen <laughs> Stacy. You know what I mean? Patricia Parker. Yeah, they made cool characters, yeah. and 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 that's so when these. But then you have these other, um, like the people from like if they're that's what they do. They're they're doing this like oh hey look we got. People of color doing this, okay, but it's a story good. Right. Give them good jobs. Right. 
don't just put them in this and and that's your marketing mm -hmm. you're marketing the wrong thing now i don't i don't believe that you you're you're um genuine or authentic with the money involved and the source material at hand this show doesn't make the five seasons where does this stand as a colossal failure at all time of like TV? i guess it depends on who you talk to yeah because i right now they're still yeah, gonna say that it's doing great well, I mean, I, I, you got to be careful. I know with Rotten Tomatoes scores, but I think he said thirty four percent Rotten. I don't trust. I don't know if that's. I don't know if that's. Whenever you do yeah. audience, whenever you do audience stuff, critics yeah. or like what drives me nuts. Stuff. Like here's the argument that pisses yeah. me off the most. Everyone's like, I don't trust critics. Look, look, I have a few critics who I respect because I I like the way they look at things. Mm. I, they're, no, they're but if some. you're gonna sit there and tell me the audience score is the most like authentic thing mm -hmm. get the fuck yeah, out of here man not. i've gone on to many audience scores and game and user scores on metacritic and seen yep. the authentic thoughts yeah get the f f look yeah. i am a trolling. part i am a part of the user score i am a part of the audience score and that thing is full of shit most of the time because all you have to do is go in and read the review for one star uh stupid no reasoning yep. no nothing no explanation mm -hmm. no I don't give a fuck about an audience score. I think sometimes it can be a little bit telling here and there, but for the most part, I put about as much stock into the audience score as I do a critical score because mm -hmm. there's a lot of fucking losers that'll go into the audience score and hype it up or dumb it down because it doesn't meet their expectations or it doesn't meet their political or whatever you want to talk, whatever, mm -hmm. whatever is their reasoning. But I don't like, look, I don't fucking do audience scores. I don't trust that nearly as much as no, I trust. No, I don't, because especially nowadays, people find ways to just try to crap on something. Oh, yeah, and that's absolutely. And that's what I said. I don't think there's, the Rings of Power is, like, the worst thing in the world. To me, it's like the water world. And if you guys remember water world, of uh, Costner, it was one of, yeah, the, one of the greatest sci-fi movies, movies of all time. One of the worst movies However, ever. can you sink the Ds? Right. Because the Ds is still out there. <laughs> He's you know, fucking nuts. Why did you have to bring that up? Uh, well, no, I didn't say anything about Use it. Use any other movie. Like that. No, but my, my <laughs> example is it was one of the most expensive movies ever made, and it didn't do that well. No. It right. was one of the biggest But bombs. it's a great movie, and don't let anybody tell you different. Tony Rings, also thinks Rings the Postman is, is really show. good. Mm -hmm. Rings of Power is not a great show. Even if I didn't like Lord of the Rings, love Lord of the Rings, it's still not a great show because the characters are so – it's beautiful but bland. And um, after three episodes, you should have had something, a fire starting by now. They haven't. And yeah. especially well, the first two flying out of the sky when Gandalf ah, apparently showed up. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> what the fuck was yeah, that? Yeah, I don't know, man. Gandalf. It's, just, it's a bummer that. I love Lord of the Rings, too. Remember? Just, remember Gandalf? Yeah, exactly. Remember Gandalf? Remember, Gan remember, remember the hobbits? Remember hobbits, but they're not hobbits. They're hardfoots, but they're hobbits, but they're dirty hobbits. It's like, <laughs> remember? No, they're just hobbits, man. <laughs> Remember Galadriel, you know, but now we made her like Rambo, so you know Ooh. she has a chip on her shoulder. She don't take shit from no man. If you think this is good, <sighs> we're gonna have this guy back when the finale runs. Yeah, I can't wait. And that'll be really. We might have to do that on a Friday night. Oh, yeah, we might have to make that a Friday night show. I don't know if I can last that long. Like this is one of the shows that I will not. Like I always got. I'm like, man, Game of Thrones. I gotta watch it. Yeah, I, I like you said. You just watched this yesterday, and it took me like three or four days. Yeah, I was I watched, watched it. it. <laughs> I was like, uh, pause. I'm done for the day. Yeah, and then I was, I w it wouldn't keep my and like the Harfoots would come on and be like, and the Harfoots would talking about, yeah, we're not gonna leave anybody behind, and then they left they the guy behind. behind. What is that? Yeah, they're going through this. Yeah, we don't leave anyone behind. They're like, okay, so here's all the people we left behind: yes. bees and wolves. I was like, wait a minute. This and then Galadriel Journey to the West, which is supposed to take fucking forever because later on, and I'm sure this isn't the spoiler because they're not gonna do this. Numenorians get pissed because. They're not really immortal, so like, fuck this, we're going to the West, so they have to create this all these boats to travel to the West. What does she do? She jumps out of the boat. What, is she going to swim back to Middle Earth? What the fuck? It's just I thought so, that was hilarious. It's I was so like, she swim back. dumb. It's yeah. like, maybe it's like, oh, shit, I'm gonna, I, know, I need to do something, so I'm going to jump out of the car type thing, but like, where do you go from there? And then, where does this racism from elves come from? Because I don't remember that being in the book at all, unless they haven't explained it yet in the show, and that's like some big flashback they're going to have. It's just like you're just creating issues for the sake of creating issues because you got something stupid to fight. Stop it. Stop it. Unless it's a big plot point. If it's not, stop it. Please. You're just mm -hmm. doing just, oh, it just makes me so mad because it could be so much better. And I'm such a huge fan and it bothers me and it disappoints me so much that this is what we got. I feel like when so the season bombed. finale runs, when we have him on, 
it'll be similar to the vibe that we got from you with Mortal Kombat and and and, and Halo. It's just gonna be like I'm just gonna be like I'm gonna turn my mic off. I'm gonna make a drink, a big drink, and just sit back and watch this guy just go absolutely fucking nuts. I couldn't watch. I didn't even try to watch Halo when I saw that they removed his helmet. I said I can't watch this show. We need to sit you down with Zach uh, Dynamite in this and, conversation. He loves it. Yeah, I'm, I'm not a. And I said, well, like I know the guys like She Hulk, but again, there's like so much political stuff injected into that. Mm-hmm. I, I tried to watch the first episode. You know, it was just men are bad, men are bad, men are bad. I'm like, ah, oh, we get it. They just punched me in the face. And oh, I like She Hulk. Mm-hmm. I'm a, I, I always thought, and I like the actress that plays her. Mm-hmm. I think, I she's think good, yeah. she looks awesome. And I, the stuff I did see, I thought she was great. But like the show itself, like that message, it was like, what are we doing? Why are we doing this? And mm-hmm. I just said, I can't, I can't do it. This, this show's not for me. Mm-hmm. And if people enjoy it, about more power to you. It's okay. I would never tell you you're stupid for enjoying something. It's just not for me. Like Rings of Power, it's just not for me. And because I love Tolkien's work so much, I think it deserves better. All right. And like I said, man, and, and that's why I'm glad we had this discussion because, like I said, as much as I love the Lord of the Rings movies, I don't know, you know, everything that's there. And, you know, and, and, and I just sit there and I watch them, but it's like, okay, it's not great. And like you said, it doesn't have that hook in me yet, but I'm like, waiting for a payoff i'm hoping for some kind of a payoff for somebody who doesn't know all the lore i'm waiting for like some kind of like hey here you go oh right. shit cool give me a hype for the next episode somebody had a really good there. thing about lex luger's mic skills which is very funny that's what rings of power is where's that at where's cuddles that? yeah yeah oh ring, rings of powers is like lex yeah luger's it looks mic good skills. but yeah and that's exactly what it is it's like it's like hooking up with a supermodel and then she opens her mouth and you're just like what the fuck like, yeah it's like that's exactly what it is that's what rings of power is. You're just as soon as they start doing doing things, moving, you're like, oh shit, this is not that good. I don't know. It is what it is. I'm hoping my brain will shut off and I can enjoy it. I just I know my love. But see, for it you shouldn't so much. have to do that for a Lord of the Rings property. You you're right, you're, right, you're right. Off, but yeah. I want to enjoy the show. But every time mm-hmm. I watch it, it's like anytime I talk about Last Jedi again, I'm just like, <laughs> and I get so angry and you become gold dust. Yeah. <laughs> Dumb. (laughs) Yeah, Yeah, it's yeah. All right, I'm gonna give you a break. Thank you. You did great. (laughs) That was awesome, and that's what we wanted, man. Like seriously, we wanted all these different perspectives on things. You know, I'm kind of like the outsider who's just there for some nerdy shit. You know, fantasy stuff and and whatnot. And then we bring in the guys who know the source material a little bit better. And so I feel like it's a good discussion to have because there are gonna be people, a lot of people out there who are on different levels of the of the material and and who are just trying to watch Mm -hmm. a show. So. Tricky again. Fuck these nerds. Come on over. We'll hang out. We'll wear our Lord of the Rings snuggies or our whatever we bought, and we'll we'll be good. Yeah, no uh, rings of power. Did you, you buy those? <laughs> right, right, right. You stupid dorks. They'd have like the wrong snuggies from another <laughs> fantasy thing. Yeah. <laughs> Whoa, wings. Loved it. Yeah. All right. Last thing we're going to talk about is um, obviously this week is Tokyo Game Show. Mm. Uh, it's one of the bigger shows of the year. Uh, a lot of uh, Japanese and, and, and theme games or you know, Capcom is heavily involved. RGG yeah. is heavily involved. That's what you want. Square Enix is heavily involved. Oh, yeah. This is where we showcase yeah. a lot of these you know, Eastern th- themed games. So we're always like really excited to check these things out. Yeah. Uh, kicking off this week, we had a Nintendo Direct and a Sony. Uh, state of play, a PlayStation mm-hmm. state of play yesterday or on on Tuesday, and um, we got a lot of good stuff. Uh, this the the Nintendo Direct was massive. Yeah, it was man. a solid direct. There yes. was a lot of farming shit in there and a lot of RPG love. Yeah, yeah. good for Nintendo, man. I mean, they they went yeah. hard with their direct. Um, yes. We're not going to go through the whole thing. We're just going to kind of talk about some of the stuff that stood out. Uh, first and foremost, yeah, um, uh, for a lot of people who are obviously huge fans, I was not a huge fan of Breath of the Wild. Mm-hmm. I'll be in the minority. I'm going to be that guy. Mm-hmm. It's like, didn't mm-hmm. do anything for me. It was kind of sure. an empty world and whatever. Sure. Uh, but we do, f- we did also find out it's not going to be called Breath of the Wild 2. Mm-hmm. Thank God. Uh, it is actually, I actually like the name. The Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I like that name. It sounds good. It looks uh, uh, sky heavy. It looked like kind of, I got Skyward Sword vibes. Yep. Yeah, and it's yeah. out on mm-hmm. May 12th. The only thing I can think every time I, or when I first saw the gameplay or what little they showed, I was like, man, I would love to have this on some new hardware. 
Mm-hmm. I would love to have this on a new Switch. I love like the a, cell shading uh, in that uh, game, though. Uh, I mean, it's yeah. beautiful. And, I mean, that's how they were able to get on yeah. open world like that yeah. To, yeah. to run smoothly is go with the cell shading like you see in those types of games because it's, it's not as much to process. But right. May 12th, 2023. Around the same May. time that uh, the original one yep. in the spring. Yep, yep. yep. And that's when that came out. We also found out this was hilarious. Miyamoto stopped into the, into the direct to uh, announce that Pikmin 4 right. is coming out. I bet he wasn't being weird at all. <laughs> it is coming it out. It is coming out on Nintendo Switch in 2023, which is awesome because it was very close to completion in 2015, eight years ago. It was close to completion eight years ago. Are you serious? <laughs> yes. Wow. He said it was close to go. Hey, we're seeing the same thing with Metroid Prime 4. I mean, they said, hey, it's almost done. And they're like, oh, well. Pull it. See you guys. Let's in get retro involved. 2030. We'll be wow. back a little bit. Uh, Fire Emblem Engage, a new mainline entry to the Fire Emblem series, will Engage. be dropping on January 20th, 2023. I'm actually kind of interested in it. Marth will be returning, so they'll be continuing his story. That's oh, always cool. Martha. Martha. Uh, Martha. Octopath Traveler. Yeah, yeah. Octopath is a good game. Uh, will be released mm-hmm. on February 24th. Uh, the same 2D HD art style. Beautiful. Uh, weirdly enough, I know that it came out on Xbox. It never made its way to PlayStation. What's that, uh, Octopath? Yeah, Octopath, Octopath I think, one. was on Game Pass on PC. It wasn't on Xbox. I, oh, okay. It's not, I thought it was on Xbox. No, no. Octopath is not on Xbox, but this one's on all consoles. This one is not listed for Xbox. Oh, That's weird. the weird thing about it. Like, it's listed Martha, for... Martha, yeah. Yeah, it's listed for PlayStation, Switch, and PC, but it's not listed for Xbox. Um, is Octopath on? Yeah, I, I was going to say, I think I downloaded Octopath. Really? So it's, so it's weird because Octopath 1 is on Xbox. It's not on PlayStation. The Octopath recent? Traveler 2 is on PlayStation, but not on Xbox. That's weird. Yeah, I don't know. Very, I guess I never realized. It's a weird. Really there, weird. There's a lot of weird stuff that happens in this in this Nintendo Direct, and we're going to talk about it here in a minute. Man, uh, but finishing up with the announcements, Bayonetta 3 uh, drops on October 28th this year. A lot of people are excited about that. The gameplay looked really dope, man. It looked really, it's, really good. It's fucking Devil May Cry. I don't care about that gameplay. I know people are excited. I mean, Devil people May love Cry that kind of. with a big old booty. Yeah, I mean, people <laughs> love that, that stylish <laughs> gameplay. True. That stylish gameplay. Uh, Tome, we know Wave 3 of Mario Kart 8 Deluxe's Booster Course Packs will launch this holiday and will include eight courses, including Mary Mountain from Mario Kart Tour and Peach Gardens from Mario Kart DS. That's dope. The last set was actually some great maps, too. Yes, I agree. But that game's so, yeah, man, Mario still, that's so cool. (laughs) <laughs> so one of the things they announced during the towards the end of this direct is that they're adding more Nintendo 64 games. We saw like Pilot Wings 64. We saw several other 64 games, and I was like, okay, these look pretty dope. But then they did the oh, and we're also adding oh, one more oh, game, shoot, yeah. and immediately you knew we're like, dude, it's been a minute. Da-na, no, da-na. Golden Eye 007 64 is making its way to Nintendo Switch. And especially if you're an owner of the expansion pass uh, that you sign up for, like the it's like the upper tier version the of their version online, online yeah, service, yeah. you get it as a part of that. And I was like, fucking sweet. That's cool. dope, dude. That's awesome. And they're like, hey, it's also got online play. I was like, oh. So not only does it have split screen, but you can play online with people. I was like, well, that, I don't, that's new. Hot job. That's, fu- yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's fucking dope. And then everyone was like, oh, shit, it's coming to Xbox Series X, too, yeah, on Game cool. Pass. That's pretty cool. And I was like, sweet. And everyone's like, like, oh, look, it's free for owners of Rare Replay. So if you bought Rare Replay, yeah. you are getting GoldenEye, uh, native 16.9 resolution, up to 4K resolution. It was remastered, okay. A consistent refresh rate. Careful with the remaster. Yeah. Uh, Four-player split screen. Everyone's like, oh, shit. And then, and then they were like, oh, man, here's how it looks. Okay, it's the old version. <laughs> it's the old it's it's the old game with 4K res. Yeah. So I mean, you're still no getting pixels. Hey, it can actually I mean, not super. Is that bad. Alex? I think that's Alex running off in the distance there. Fringling, James Fringling, Alex. Is that Sean? Trevor, Anyways, traveling, yeah. Game looks, you know, whatever. But here's the thing, guys. Here's the interesting thing. Those mountains. This also people spotted. Right. People spotted this on the Switch update. Exclusive to the new Switch version of 1997 title will be online play, allowing 007 fans across the world to take part in the popular four-person multiplayer mode. The Switch version. The oh. Xbox version will not have online multiplayer. Why? 
Dude. That's how? How are you gonna do that? How does the switch with the shittiest online suite? That must have been a contract somewhere. It's got it's Nintendo shit. Something with Rare and yeah. something with Nintendo yeah. or whatever they worked Doesn't out. Does Microsoft deal. own Rare? Do, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Microsoft owns Rare, but I think something with Nintendo and and the Golden Eye sixty four game. The they have a little bit there. Damn. But dude, that's fucking wild. That the Switch is the only version that gets multiplayer online. Obviously, split screen is where the game's at. Now, here's my question to you guys. We saw the the Series X uh, version of the game. It's basically the Switch version, the 97 version, up resed, the 7, you know, 4K, and looking good and whatnot. How long does nostalgia keep you actually playing this game? I honestly, I think you'll be like, oh, that was fun. And then after like a day or two, You'll be playing your Call of Duty again. <laughs> I mean, like, look, I, I, I've i said this before in the past. I love SOCOM 2. Y'all know I love SOCOM right. 2. If, if Sony were to be like, dude, we're up the old SOCOM 2 from 2003 to 4K resolution, mm-hmm. not doing anything else, go play online. No. I'm going to go out and play online for like five minutes. Like you said, man, yeah. oh, that was fun. Give me a proper version. Yep. GoldenEye was a great game. It was an amazing game. I had a lot of fun with that shit. We've evolved since 1997. Sometimes you can't go back to that stuff. It's like a pick it up, put it down. Sometimes it's best to let things stay in the past. Yeah, you know. Try playing. Try Like I keep telling everybody, you think GoldenEye is fucking great? Dust off your fucking 64, plug it in, try playing it one analog now, a shooting game. <laughs> you know? try, I dare you. You know, you know it's funny, man. I, I love the Resistance games on PlayStation. Loved Resistance. When that came out, Resistance was fucking awesome. I played Resistance recently on the PS3 in that control scheme. No. Yeah. Nope. Yeah. I don't want to play that shit. Yeah. I need modernized controls. Yeah. A little bit prettier looking game. Like, look, I, I'll play this. Right, if it's on right. Game Pass and it's on expansion on Switch, I'll play it. Check it out. Relive it for a minute. I just don't see this shit. I mean, and there, dude, there's a reason it's included in Game Pass, and there's a reason it's included in the expansion thing. Mm-hmm. You look at the visuals. This is not the, the Switch version is basically the '97 game. Here you go. The the Xbox version is here. It's a cleaner picture. Here's yeah. your here's your shitty visuals. I just don't see that having a whole. I mean, yeah. it's cool. It's nostalgia, great. I just don't feel like this is a huge announcement. You know what I'm saying? It's just it's cool. It's just nothing I'm gonna get really hard up about. Right. So that was our uh, that was the Nintendo Direct. I thought it was beefy. There was a lot of shit in there. It was mm-hmm. a lot of good stuff, um, and, and they did really go with that. And then later in the day, the Sony State of Play that came out was weird. It was underwhelming. It was all samurai games. Yeah. And now look, it's the Tokyo Game Show. I get it. It's Japanese theme, and there's a lot of good stuff in your Japanese theme. Tekken. Uh, we looked saw really good by the Tekken, way. Tekken Tekken Eight looked really good. Well, I mean, was that? Gameplay? That was gameplay. That was gameplay. That was in game PS5 gameplay. Yeah, that was Holy great. shit. Yeah, I thought is. that was a cutscene. No, no. Oh, oh yeah. my God. That did look good. That, that looked really good. God. Yeah, uh, no Project Eve, which was announced last year. Now, this one's interesting. Project Eve was showing off last year. It, it, it came back again this year. It's called Stellar Blade. Now, they went through a title change. Mm-hmm. Uh, it showed off all the gameplay cinematics, giving players a look at the game's futuristic setting and story. It looked really good. Interesting thing about this is this is one of the two... PS5 exclusive games they announced. When they revealed this game, it said PlayStation, Xbox, and PC. Remember, and oh, now it it's exclusive. a PS5. No, it's PS5 exclusive. Huh. Who's the developer? Uh, that is, I believe. Shift Up? Oh, gosh. From Korean Studio Shift Up, right? Oh, yeah. See, there you go. Yep. Korean Shift Up. Yep. What have they done? Uh, that I, uh, I don't know. They made mobile game. <laughs> Probably, I don't know. It's just really You're interesting right. how right, yeah. when they announced this game, it had all these platforms, and now Xbox is out of it. It's uh, people were just like, "Well, that's weird." Normally, it's you a, wouldn't show they're that. They're probably like, "Yeah, you can have that." But now Sony is publishing <laughs> it. Sony is publishing it. Interesting. Uh, well, it looked kind of like an Eastern version of uh, uh, like a Dark Souls. Maybe I don't know if nope. it's gonna be a hard game like that. No, the other one that will be like that, I that believe, one? is gonna be the Neo developer uh, Team Ninja. They announced Rise of Ronin, which looked a lot like uh, Ghost of Tsushima. Which I'm hoping is more Ghost of Tsushima and not Neo 
Souls hard. I think you'll probably have somewhere in between. I yeah, think you'll be somewhere in When I in saw there. Team Ninja, I was like, this game's probably going to be really hard. It's probably going to be really tough. <laughs> yeah, <keep going. laughs> I, was like, I don't know if I'm going to play this. But Rise of the Lost it looks fucking dope. Like, it, it looked yeah, pretty it good. Looked really I just, good. I, again, you like after Ghost of Tsushima, it's like, there's, yeah, it's a, there's a bar. Yeah, there is a bar. There's a bar yeah. now, guys. Because <laughs> like, I, I felt like every other game was a samurai style game, so. Uh, the game that I thought looked most interesting out of uh, the Japanese titles uh, yeah. was the Yakuza spinoff yeah, Fishing, pretty, yeah. which has never that launched a, out west. That's a samurai game as well, right? Yep, but it's 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 from the same developer that made the Yakuza games, RGG. Yeah, and so now they're bringing this west, mm-hmm. giving like a full remake, remaster. It's coming to all platforms. It'll be on PlayStation Four, Definitely PS5, looks a little Xbox. dated. That was the one thing I noted. But it'll look it'll look better than what it did. And again, this is like from the same people that make all the Yakuza games. So like right. people are really excited about sure. this oh, yeah. making its way west. Super, super. So exciting. that looked really cool. good. Uh, but the thing about this state of play that was just so bizarre is you had these Japanese titles, but then they squeeze in like these V PlayStation VR yeah. TVs. Yeah. It just seemed again. It just seemed like why won't you save this stuff for your big showcase at some point? Mm-hmm. I mean, there's Star Wars, but I mean, you mentioned this Star Wars game has been out for a while on Meta Yeah, Quest. I'm pretty sure that's the one. I do on think the Dino looks fucking sweet. The the board, uh, the card game. Yeah, that, that was you... interesting. Well, yeah. and then they show like the Harry Potter. Yeah, Harry Potter has like a has a uh, an exclusive quest on PlayStation. But again, it's Hogwarts Legacy. We've known about that for a while, so it's just kind of weird that yeah, uh, uh, an exclusive quest would make its way into a state of play. It's just this thing felt yeah. kind of rushed. Like let's. Push but, this in your. Or they didn't have anything to show. I think everyone's still waiting right. for that big PlayStation showcase, the one where they look at what all the PlayStation Studios are working on yeah, for the next the year. The big, that's big like stuff. the big show that that everyone's kind of. When is that for. usually? That normally it's like this week or next week. It's usually a September thing, so everyone's like, "Where the fuck is this show at?" Mm. But at the end of the show, we got to see one more trailer. I think it's the only trailer that any of us gives a shit about. Tone. Fuck yeah. I know you're hyped about it. It's got to hear the sound, man. Yeah. And we're gonna check that trailer right now. Let's hop over to our trailers thing. This isn't a D twenty three, but we're gonna watch this trailer for God of War Ragnarok. Everyone keeps secrets. Sometimes it's the only way to protect the ones we love. I know you. God killer. What is it you want from me? Is it a god of war you came to find? You don't really want war. Do you, Kratos? All that blood on your hands? On your son's hands? What is it you will not tell me? I can't talk about it. But I just need you to trust me. We follow your every whim. But you don't believe in any of it. And still, I follow. Because all that matters is that you are safe. But that's not all that matters. Who's keeping you safe? I do not need you to protect me. You sure about that? Pretender God! For the old father! Death can have me when it hurts me. What do you even know of God's word? In your lifetimes, has anyone ever worshipped you? Ever prayed to you? Can you even imagine that kind of love? No! You don't care about anything beyond yourself. Beyond the monster who kills without cause. Fate only binds you if you let it. Do what is necessary. Not because it is written. Goosebumps. Yep. 
I mean, oh. honestly, dude, Ooh. that's all I need to see. I don't want to see any more trailers. Yeah. I don't need to see anything else. Um, just get here November. Yeah, I mean that that that's really what it is. Just November 9th needs to get I here now. PS five. Um, <laughs> so PS four. It's on PS four too. I'm gonna there? turn on PS five. <laughs> <laughs> Can't say I blame you. He gives me a, re- a reason. Um, uh, I mean that trailer mm-hmm. was incredible. That looked good. Um, I'm really excited to see where they go with this. Obviously, this is the final chapter in the Norse. Uh, version of, of Kratos, um, but that trailer was fucking nuts, dude. Yeah, I, man, that, was, I, that I, finish I, too was awesome. So um, I'm excited for it. It was a good week, though. Obviously, Tony uh, Tokyo Game Show is going on all week. We'll see stuff all week. Capcom, I think, went today. I didn't get a chance to see what they showed. Oh man, I gotta look. Um, there's yeah, been was, a lot of yeah. stuff. It's gonna Always be all Capcom. week. So um, there's gonna be all sorts of stuff going on. But it was uh, it was pretty sweet, man. Like I, I, I just. I, I thought the director was really, really good. That was really beefy. The 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 state of play, I, I appreciated the God of War, and there was some good stuff in there. But overall, I just felt like, man, this feels like something yeah. they threw together at the last minute. Yeah. I'm ready for the showcase. I want to see what all the first-party studios are working on, um, You know, specifically uh, Gorilla's second team. What are you guys working on? I don't know, those Rainbow Six Siege guys. What, uh, what kind of shooter are you making? Not making a SOCOM, are you? What Anywho. Was the, what was the last game they made? Uh, the the gr- Gorilla? Yeah. They did Horizon Forbidden. But they have they a, Horizon. They have that's a second right. team that's, that's right. working on... Team B is working on something that we don't know yet. Yeah. Really? But they hired a bunch of Rainbow Six Siege devs. Oh, there's not another Killzone. Dude, I, I, I want a SOCOM instead of a Killzone. But I did like Killzone's Warzone online mode where the modes, uh, like you would sometimes, it would switch in the middle of a match. One time it would be like, all right, seek and destroy. And then another time it was like, plant the bomb. And then it would switch multiple times, team death match. It was all in one match. It would constantly keep changing. So I thought Killzone's multiplayer suite was interesting, but I just feel like we're past Killzone. Bringing in tactical guys like Rainbow Six wouldn't make sense for that, yeah, though. Yeah, it, it doesn't really fit yeah. for, Man, for something like that. Soulcom. Dude, if Man. they bring that shit in, dude, it's over. It's fucking over. It is over. It's uh, time. Uh, Rohit, one more time. Uh, your boy wants to know you got a problem with this movie. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, that is going to do it for this week's show. Uh, we had a lot to talk about, a lot of passion, a lot of love, a lot of uh, tough love tonight. But Rohit, man, it is always a pleasure, my man, to have you on. Thanks, guys. We love your insight. We love your perspective. I appreciate you guys having me. And uh, you'll always have a spot here. And like I said, we're looking forward to having you back on once uh, this amazing show comes to a close in its first season. We if talk about- I make it that far. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna try. I am gonna try. I'm gonna give it a try. I mean, I, I will give it. I've given it a try so far, but it is what it is. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Kyle says, "Did you see before you can play the COD beta? So you have to agree not to be a jerk." Uh, you know, I actually uh, I'm gonna download that. The COD beta is this weekend, so I'm going to take a look at Thanks, that. Crash. That's right, Cuddles. Two Saturdays from now. Yes. Cuddles, me and the dude. 7D Dungeons guys, Jurassic, of course, DMing, along with uh, Grayson, as you know him as well, too, and Mike from Trinor Studios. We are getting together uh, sometime throughout the day, I think earlier in the mid-evening, playing some D&D. Be there on 7 Dungeons channel as well, too. We'll probably be hosting us here. We're very excited yeah. to be able to do that and play that, too. Now, the survey is done as of now. Um, we don't have a show next week, actually. I'm on vacation. A lot of things going on, so we're going to have to skip another week and then jump back. Uh, the following as well, which would be, I don't know the date for sure, but um, make sure to be there for that. Watch any of our social medias for that stuff. As always, we appreciate when you guys share, like, subscribe, you know, tell a friend, whoever it is on any of our social media posts, whether it's Twitter, Facebook. We certainly always want to thank you for that as well, too. But I'm really, really excited for the next couple of weeks here. Uh, very, very honestly, I think the D&D is going to be a great time as well, too. Oh, yeah. um, and then, again, back with the survey, we do want to talk about that, but we want to have the discussion on, on, on the channel live here with everybody as well, too, to kind of We're gonna talk take about all those. That info take and... that info and share it with everybody and kind of get some more comments as that's flown out. So that's why we want to be able not to do it tonight so that we could have – um, well, it didn't happen, but I really wanted him to choke the dude for real. But um, <laughs> we're civilized, we're professionals. Yeah, we're professionals. 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 So as you always, beat the re- shit out of me after we cut the stream. <laughs> yeah, That's why my goal. You make that uh, thing, huh? <laughs> yeah, because I'm professional here. <laughs> But, uh, professional piece of shit. <laughs> that's a fact. That's a fact. Not wrong. That's a fact. But we appreciate you guys for being here. I know it's a fun long show, but yeah, we knew we wanted to dive into this Lord of the Rings 
uh, because yeah, as you I can tell, very, very was... passionate about it. Well, and that, that was the plan, you know, and I really wanted to hear your thoughts on it as well, too, though. Because th- there's people out there who share your thoughts, and there's a lot of people out there who feel the same way about it. And I feel like that's the important thing is we want to be able to say it's okay to feel this way about mm-hmm. it. You know, don't listen to fucking Amazon. Don't it's okay just, not yeah. to be happy with it. Yeah. Fight the man. Yeah. Uh, but like Tone said, no show next week, but the following week we will have a show. We will have a lot to talk about. We're going to talk about Clerks 3. Uh, probably going to talk about Pearl. Mm-hmm. Probably get a viewing yeah, of, of that. Mm-hmm. And then we'll also give our first impressions, uh, spoiler-free impressions of Andor. Yeah. So we'll talk about that. So we're going to have a monster fucking Andor. show. Ooh, I can't wait to watch that. It's going to be it's gonna be a big one. It's going to be a big one. That'll yes. be on uh, no, or what is it? November. No. September 28th. There you go. That's is when we'll return for another proper episode of Banter right. Belt. You know what? If anything, man, uh, maybe even talk about Cobra Kai. I think oh, that'll be yeah, a big conversation. Really well, I finished that already. I have not even started it, so that's what I will do with my good. week off. Did you watch it yet? I'm halfway through it. We will po- I will power through it, and uh, we will talk about So, yeah, that's a big show. Pearl will have uh, Clerks 3, Cobra Kai, mm-hmm. Season 5, and or First Impressions. We'll have a beefy show to talk about on September 28th. Uh, as Tone said, likes, shares, all that stuff is appreciated. If you're listening on iTunes or Spotify, hit that five-star review. If, you, if you're if you on the shitter and you got a couple minutes, write a review on iTunes. That's That goes a long ways as well. And, of course, if you're on social media, which you should be, make sure you follow this guy, at Hakeem Zane, yes. on Twitter. Yes. But you know him best as Rohit Raju, yeah. the man, the mocha skin man. Mocha skin man, at Raju Zane 80, and of course, ProWrestlingTees.com slash Rohit, where I just dropped the brand new God Created All Men Equal, and then he created me the sequel t-shirt. Oh, shit. I'm yes. buying one. What's yes. your mom call you again? She calls me son. Why is that? Because he's shy like that. He sure does. We love this guy. Thanks again for being here tonight, man. We I really appreciate you. I love shooting the shit with you. Oh, yeah. yeah. Love hanging it's out with you. Laughs. For Fanboy Tone, the great Rohit Raju. I'm the dude 79. Everyone have a great weekend. Hey, yo. We'll see you again on September 28th. Take care, everybody.